Hello and greetings. Welcome to Jack Plotnick's acting workshop. Uh, I hope that everybody out there is staying safe and well and sane. And um, I'm excited to have you all here today. Um, this is a film television acting workshop and all the money uh, that we make today goes to Stacey Abrams Fair Fight 2020 which uh, is going to be protecting the integrity of the upcoming elections. So that's a really great thing to do, right? Um, so before we get started, and uh, I'm gonna just talk a little bit about uh, my approach to acting, which is a joyful, selfish, non-controlling, non-result-oriented approach to acting that I believe books more work. Uh, my take on acting <clears throat> for film and TV is that acting's fucking easy. <laughs> because, you know, uh, it's just plain pretend. I define acting as behaving as if it's really happening. And there's no right way to do that. And it takes little to no preparation to play pretend. Um, besides what you feel like putting into it. Because the truth is that we don't create our performance in a television show or a film. The editor does. Our job is to just play in front of the camera and, um, you know, Chris Reeve has a great quote. He said, uh, the great movies and TV shows are made of lucky accidents caught on film. And so a movie is just a series of these beautiful, lucky uh, accidents. Because um, when you're acting on film, it has to be spontaneous, meaning unplanned, um, unpremeditated. And uh, you can't fake that. <laughs> Uh, acting's fake, though. You, you know, it, you don't have to make it real. You just behave as if it's really happening. But the camera is um, means to capture lucky accidents. Um, so um, acting is easy, but it's really uncomfortable, isn't it? You know, it, it's very uncomfortable. Um, we feel vulnerable and tense. Our heart races. Our stomach is full of butterflies. Judy Dench, she calls that feeling her batteries because it is that racing heart that makes magic happen in front of the camera. Your racing heart, what I call excitement, it sends more blood to your brain and you become superhuman because your brain expands. Or I like to say, I feel as though that racing heart plugs me into my higher power or the magic of acting. And then I feel as though my higher power guides me through um, each performance. Uh, that I receive it in front of the rolling camera as opposed to something that I plan and plot out and then deliver to the camera like some sort of dead gift. So the uncomfortableness is uh, a fine thing because it's never going to go away. So you might as well enjoy it. However, anxiety is a bad thing. Anxiety is the enemy of the artist. Anxiety uh, keeps us from being able to play pretend. Uh, now, um, feelings aren't facts. Every feeling is caused by a thought. So a negative feeling is caused by a negative thought. And that's why I, I believe that as actors, our number one job is to learn to control our thoughts. And to do that, you've got to imagine that that negative voice you're hearing in your head that's making you feel anxiety, that voice that's saying things like, oh, this isn't going well. They don't like you. You're not prepared. I tell actors to please move that negative voice outside your head. Stop thinking it's you and that it's the truth. And instead see it as like a vulture that's just like squawking on your shoulder. And now by doing that, you've changed your whole life because you stopped self-identifying with the negative voice and you've now created the real you, the one who's listening to that. And now you can let your vulture know, I'm not interested in discussing what you want to discuss because your vulture or your ego it's the half of you that wants you to fail. So it's not saying the truth. It's just saying what it knows you'll currently listen to. So the way you talk to your vulture is to understand that it's okay to want to do a good job, but when you need to do a good job, you, you can't. So there's a big difference between want and need. I hope you want to book every job you audition for, but if you need it, you can't get it because need is fear-based. Need says, I know what's best for me. And if I don't get this, I'm not worthy of anything, et cetera, et cetera. So when uh, the way you talk to your vulture is to say, uh, for instance, if your vulture says uh, you're not a good actor, you don't say, yes, I am, because 
your vulture will just go, no, you're not. <laughs> so you say, well, I release and destroy my need to be a good actor. And your vulture goes, yeah, but you're not a Wait, what? I release and destroy my need to be a good actor. Look, I want to be a good actor, but I release and destroy my need to be a good actor. And then your vulture is flummoxed. You don't want to talk about whether you're a good actor or not. And when your vulture shuts up, the pressure to be a good actor comes off and you can enjoy yourself and you can enjoy how easy and fun and uncomfortable acting is. And then you're a much better actor than you were with the, the thought you're not a good actor rolling around your brain. So, um, you know, if I was sitting where you guys are sitting and I had to uh, perform a scene today, my vulture would be saying a lot of mean stuff to me. So I would be saying right up until I perform, I'd be saying what I call my actor affirmations. They're the first chapter of my free book that you can read here at this link. My free book is called New Thoughts for Actors. The first chapter is there because it's the most important thing I teach, the actor affirmations. So um, I'm gonna go through some of the things my vulture would be saying to me if I had to perform today and what I'd be saying back to get him to shut up so that I could enjoy my art. So first off, my vulture would be saying something like, uh, you have to perform this scene, so you have to make it look good and you've got to know the right way to do it that's gonna please your audience. To which I would say, I release and destroy my need to control this audition today. I'm not strong enough to control it and when I try, it just ruins it. So instead, I'm just going to ask my higher power or my racing heart to lovingly guide me through it. And however it goes, it was meant to go. Even if it goes badly today, that's fine. I don't have a thing called failure. If it goes badly, it was meant to, and that's fine. Um, next, my vulture would be saying how I'm not where I need to be to do the scene. It's saying, well, you didn't do enough work on this. There's those 15-step guide that you learned from that, that teacher of all the things you're supposed to do, the work you're supposed to put into the scene and you didn't do that. And you're also not memorized enough and you also don't feel like being here. And to all those things, I just go, look, I release and destroy my need for any of those things. I'm just going to take it from where I am. I can't be more prepared than I am. I can't be more memorized than I am. I can't have done work I didn't do. So I'll just take it from where I am and however I'm feeling and however prepared I am is a fine place to begin the scene. When the scene begins, I'm just going to behave as if it's really happening to me for the first time, like in what I call an improv. Uh, next, my vulture might be saying, you better do a good job because this is a class and he's a teacher, right? To which I'd say, um, I release and destroy my need for any of those things. But more importantly, I release and destroy my need to even be an actor. I'll let the other people here be the actors and have all those responsibilities that come with it. Okay, I'm not an actor. I'm just here to be me and enjoy playing in these circumstances. Uh, if I was doing a drama, my vulture would be saying a lot of stuff about drama acting to me, about how to do good drama acting, how my agent once told me to go in there and make strong choices. Uh, so I would want to remind myself, no, um, Drama acting is a mirror of real life, meaning I have to fucking behave as if it's really fucking happening. So anything I wouldn't be involved in in real life, I'm not going to get involved in today during my drama audition. So I like to remind myself these three things because they are how I live my life. So number one, I'm not going to make any choices, not one. Because more importantly, I'm going to allow choices to happen to me based on the circumstances. And if nothing happens, that's fine. It's fine if nothing happens in a drama audition because an audience can project upon a blank space everything they know about what's happening in the scene. I thought I would share this video with you guys that illustrates how projection works in a drama. And this is um, the final moment of the movie, um, I forget the name of it, but it's considered the greatest close-up in the history of cinema, the most powerful close-up, and it's uh, Greta Garbo in the film Queen Christina. And uh, let's see if this works, I hope it does. Yeah, there it is. So um, this moment that is so powerful, it's still talked about today, uh, has Greta Garbo uh, standing on the bow of a ship at the very end of the film and she's looking out at the ocean, at the war she lost and the lover she left behind. 
And the director told her to keep her face blank because he knew that an audience would project powerful things on her. So let, let's go ahead and, and check that out. Again, most powerful, considered the most powerful close-up in the history of cinema, and she's doing nothing. The reason why it's still remembered today and why it's so adored is that, you know, here's what everybody else was doing at the time, and still to this day they think they're supposed to do, and this is, this is what they're doing, and action. You know? It's just another crappy close-up we've seen a million times. But I'm not saying to do nothing. I'm saying, more importantly, allow things, allow choices to happen to you. And once you understand that if nothing happens, that's fine, then you really stop with the panic making a choice. And now you've left a blank space in those magic moments of genuine reaction, which is a space in which something can happen to you, where you could be surprised by a new thought image or concept that you could have an emotional reaction to, which is great acting, being surprised by a thought or a feeling in front of a rolling camera. That's great acting. Number two, for a drama, I'd remind myself that the words, I'm not going to deliver them or color them. <laughs> I'm going to throw them away. They're going to tumble out of my face when they want to. I have faith I have the character's thoughts and feelings, and that's what matters. And the words I'll just throw away. And number three, that I hope the audience feels so fucking uncomfortable watching me do this scene. So I'm not going to do anything to make the audience or myself comfortable. So I hope they feel so uncomfortable. And I'll do that by not taking care of the scene at all, but instead and only being interested in my experience of behaving as if this is really happening to me for the first time. Because acting runs on empathy. The audience has the experience you have. So if you have a rich surprising emotional experience, that's how you give the audience a rich, surprising emotional experience. If you're just regurgitating the way you practice the audition outside in the hallway, that's not an experience at all. And then they're not gonna have any experience. They can only feel what you feel. Next, uh, if I was doing a comedy today, my vulture would be saying a lot of junk about how I'm supposed to be funny. And you can't make an audience laugh by trying to make them laugh. Because again, acting runs on empathy. So they'll be tickled if you're tickled. So if I was doing a comedy, I'd say I release and destroy my need to be funny. I'm just here to tickle myself with my own genuine, spontaneous human behavior. Because that's what makes a comedy a comedy. And lastly, <clears throat> pardon me. My vulture might be saying about how you need to do a good job and impress these people, to which I would say I release and destroy my need to impress these people here today. As a matter of fact, I give myself permission to hate them. I'm not really going to hate them, but I give myself permission to hate them. And if I have permission to hate them, then who gives a crap what they think of me? So fuck them. So again, the actor affirmations are the most important thing I teach. And I'm curious if any of you guys <clears throat> have any questions about the affirmations or how they work, uh, or maybe if there's anything your vulture is saying to you right now that you don't know what to say back. For some reason, I can't scroll today, so I can't see all you. Oh, there it is. Now it's working. If anybody has a question, just go like that. If any of you guys out there have something your vulture is saying or a question about anything I've shared so far, um, if not, that's fine. I'm going to talk just a little bit more. And then we're going to begin your auditions. <clears throat> and again, we're going to approach today as if you're auditioning for this role with me reading opposite you. Okay, so nobody has any questions. So um, I'm going to talk now about the, um, the secret to auditioning. Um, and that is that you are not here to show us what the scene will look like in the finished product. 
because all that will do is make you need to get it word perfect, keep it moving and make it look like a nice smooth polished surface. It doesn't book work. So the way I like to describe how you should approach your audition is like this. Every actor, when they book a job on film and they go to set, their first take of each scene is always the same. And I call the first take, let me get something on film that won't embarrass me. You know that feeling, right? In other words, let me show what the scene will look like in the finished product. It's the same thing. And the director is always like, okay, well, let's keep doing the scene, right? And you do the scene again and again and again. And, and maybe you're on the eighth take. The director's like, great, thank you, guys. We have the scene. We're done. We can move on to the next scene. I have what I need, and I'll, uh, I'll find it later in the editing room. So we can move on to the next scene now, although we, we have a little time to kill. I guess we could do this scene again, but I'm never even going to look at this take because I don't need it. So I guess this one's for you. Action. And then what happens when the editor watches the ninth take? She's always like, finally, something I can use. Finally, a take filled with those beautiful, lucky, magical, spontaneous, happy accidents, which is what a great movie or TV show is made of. Um, now, the reason why they use the ninth take is because it's the only time the actors are acting. If you agree that acting is behaving as if it's really happening. The ninth take is the only time we give ourselves permission to do that. Um, because every other take, we're just trying to show what the scene will look like in the finished product. And you can't behave as if it's really happening when you're doing that. So <clears throat> how do I have faith I'm doing the ninth take? Because that's what I do. When I go into an audition room, my first go is as if it's the ninth take. Well, right before I walk into the audition room, uh, I like to pretend I'm the director. And he's already seen me do the scene several times. And he's now letting me know. And I imagine he's saying this to me in my head, that he says, oh, my God, Jack, thank you so much for bringing in all those brilliant choices. They were perfect for the scene. And I had them all on film perfectly. And I'm going to use them. So since we're done, but we're doing it again, and I'm never going to look at this tape, well, I guess that means you don't have to do any of that brilliant stuff you brought in. Gosh, I guess you can just behave as if it's really happening. Just want to surprise yourself. Oh, um, take all the time you want and your permission to do it badly. I'm never going to look at this tape. And then action. I do the audition. So I hope that you guys will approach the scene today as if it's the ninth take. Does anybody out there, and you can, again, you can wait. Anybody out there have any questions about the ninth take, how to do it, um, <clears throat> why it's important? Okay, so Does anybody out there have any questions at all about anything that's bothering you with your acting lately or doesn't have to be on any of the subjects I just talked about? Okay, so it uh, looks like um, Tim is starting. So I'm gonna bring you up now. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, I'm let playing. me find your scene. You're doing Todd, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me make this window a bit bigger. Now, Todd is a film half hour mm -hmm. and Todd is a guy that still does with his thumb. Mm -hmm. And it says in this scene that uh, it says we're in Todd's bedroom. Mm -hmm. I was staring at an, this is not my words, ugly girl sleeping yeah. in his bed and freaking out. Yeah. He says she wakes up, shit. So um, since I have the first line, you just let me know when you're ready to begin. And again, this is a filmed half hour comedy. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. Hi. Come cuddle with me. Uh, the cuddle window's expired. When? When I got sober. Go 
Don't tell me you were drunk when you had your fingers inside of my... Yeah. Um, here's the thing, Mary. Uh, for, uh, Teresa. For, Teresa, right. Teresa. Here's the thing. I'm sure you have a lot on your plate today, so you probably have to get going. So I understand if you have to... It's 6 a.m. Well, I mean, for most people, the day's half over. Like who? Like my mother. Here's the thing. Last night was fun. Somewhere in my subconscious. Um, but, um, and I know it'd be really chivalrous of me to take you out to dinner. Or breakfast or lunch. But um, I have my breakfast waiting for me downstairs already, so... You want me to leave so you can eat your breakfast with your mother? No, no. I mean, she's probably already eaten. Are you kicking me out? I'm not an asshole. I'm... I'm politely asking you to leave. Fine, I'll go. Should I take the stairs or hop out the window? Oh. Uh, I didn't know the window... That sounds great. Yeah, use the window. <laughs> Bye. Take it easy. Mom, I need my sheets changed. Okay, good, good. So uh, I'm going to ask you what your experience of doing that was because I believe it is your experience that matters most mm -hmm. because, um, again, the audience can only have the experience you have. And if you have an experience where your vultures squawk and a bunch of, you know, result-oriented concerns, that makes mm -hmm. behaving as if this scene is really happening to you really hard. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a good experience for you. So it's not a good experience for the audience. But if you have an experience where you vault your silence, so it's easy to just behave as if this is really happening. It's a good experience for you. So it's a good experience for the audience. And that's why I tell actors, you got to be selfish, only interested in your own experience. Because mm -hmm. any part of you that's worried about your audience is a part of you not back here having a rich, selfish, emotional experience, surprising experience, mm -hmm. thereby giving the audience a rich, surprising, emotional experience. So when I say, uh, did anything come up you don't care for, was there anything your vulture was squawking about? Um, there were moments uh, that I felt my vulture about to squawk, but about about to say, you don't know the lines, but before I let it sort of derail me, I was able to quickly be like, I really need to know the lines to be perfect. And, um, and when you said that, did your vulture shut up and did you feel that pressure roll off? Yeah, yeah, because I just, I realized, I know, like, it'll come and be, like, it'll come as long as I stay, I keep my, I guess, my energy and my focus away from well, thinking of external, yeah. externally and more. Well, using a lot of very colorful words when really it's just, you can't remember words when your vulture is squawking about how you have to remember yeah. the words. Mm -hmm. So it's not about energy or focus. It's literally just when your vulture is silent, you have to understand your brain is a fucking supercomputer when your heart is racing. It will remember the idea of the line at least. Mm -hmm. But you have to give it a moment. Yeah. And, act and actors think, oh no, I got to keep that scene moving. And then their vulture starts screaming, speed it up. You don't know the lines, you know? So what I love is that you pointed out to everybody when you begin the affirmations and, and learning to control your thoughts, what I teach, you'll have to say them while you're acting because your vulture squats while you're acting. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just saw how that works. And that's wonderful because uh, eventually you won't have to say the affirmations because your vulture will stay silent for the whole audition. And boy, what a joy that is. And that's mm -hmm. when you tend to book the most work is when you can do your art with no anxiety. Uh, so, but nonetheless, you, so your vulture used to get away with saying you don't know the lines well, and today it didn't. Mm -mm, did not. That's great. Uh, anything else your vulture might have said? Or was that the only thing it was wanting to say? I think that that's what I, that's, yeah, I think that's the only thing it wanted did to say. Feel, did anything else feel better than usual based on what you're working on with me? Yeah, I, um, life? I was allowed, I, I, this is my third one of fourth one with you of uh, totally, but this is the third workshop I've done virtually. And um, just like you say, allowing it to happen as if it's happening in real life and focusing more on that and 
I guess not. And also, I also struggle with memorizing the lines a certain way and making choices and sticking with them each time I go through it. Whereas this time I felt less, cause I did, I did like memorize it and stuff, but I was less tied to the choices I had made previously. And I just let it happen as you, cause as you re responded to me, which was really, really nice. Yeah, cause I didn't did take the pressure off. Yeah, it takes pressure off because what you're describing is that you used to put an added pressure on yourself, which was the pressure to do it the way I planned. Yeah. Which, by the way, is never going to be as good as something that happens to you. Yeah. Because you can't fake spontaneity, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking at the water you're swimming in and whether you're swimming in the kind of water that will allow the editor lots of beautiful, happy, lucky accidents. Because mm -hmm. they know how acting works. They know it has to be spontaneous. And that's what the editor is looking for. But um, what, uh, because you, did, uh, you were less married to any preconceived notions you had of line readings or result-oriented uh, concepts, did you find that you were more surprised by how the scene came out? Yeah, I'd say so. Was that yeah. more fun? It is more fun. Because I... Way? Yeah, it is cuz yes, I know what the lines are, but yes. it I'm like, oh, I didn't think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, lines are tools that we memorize and then they become tools for the artist in the performance, not dead gifts we're going to hand them as result-oriented objects. We're not mm -hmm. making wooden shoes on a conveyor belt. We have <laughs> these lines and we get to see we're not going to an audition to show them the way the scene will look. We're going to an audition to discover in front of them one of the many ways the scene could look. Mm -hmm. But you know what I hope you'll start doing is to please understand you have more power than you think you do in terms of memorizing with no line readings. Mm -hmm. So you know it sounds like you did have a bunch of ideas, but you just went, eh, I don't want to think about those. And what I recommend is that you don't even do that step of the process. It's not a step okay. I do. Mm -hmm. Because then it just makes you go, don't do that stuff you thought you might do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. See, every actor, when they memorize, has a vulture that goes, oh, say it like this. And you've got to tell your vulture, no, I'm not acting right now. I'm memorizing. And I don't want to know how I'm going to say it. I want to be surprised by how the lines come out the same way the character is surprised. So vulture, while I memorize, I'll just put all my focus on what the words mean, the meaning of the line, the idea of the line. And mm -hmm. you're going to find that all of a sudden you can memorize super quickly. Because that's the healthy way to memorize. The other way makes it harder to memorize. Line readings make it impossible to memorize because you're not understanding what you're memorizing. And you really have to accept the fact that the ideas your vulture is saying when your heart isn't racing are shit. They're just not very good ideas because your heart isn't racing. You're just kind of, you know, you're not that extra superhuman expanded universe energy you have. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I uh, hope that next time you'll really be more, even more firm with yourself. And yeah. Um, so anyway, you know, the goal here is to uh, do your second read the first time, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, obviously you did. And it was a very nice audition. And obviously you did because you were free from a bunch of the vulture squawks you were having in the past. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a very nice audition. And I, however, you had some fucking beautiful moments, but I just wanted more of them, more unplanned See, if you watch that back, there'd be some moments that you'd be like, I don't remember making that face. I don't remember <laughs> doing that. And, and that's the goal is to just have your audition be filled with those moments. Mm -hmm. But actors, they pick up a script and they look at it and they go, okay, so here's these lines. I've got to go in there and say the lines and say them well. Mm -hmm. Better than that guy who's going to go in there after me. And because they think their job is to say the lines and say them well, they go through an audition like it's a narrow hallway. And because they're constricted by these walls in this narrow hallway they end up racing through the scene and they're like oh i said all the lines that was fast uh how was i but see i want you guys to be the actors who break down those walls that you feel constrict you and instead you see the scene as this big playing field where anything can happen these are just the words but anything can happen in terms of thoughts feelings images movement added words added thoughts that you had never thought of and then all of a sudden you're the actor who's really taking a bite out of the scene, really approaching it like an improv. And then you're driving home going, wow, I didn't expect to think that or feel that or say the line like that. And um, so I just wanted more of that. Mm -hmm. And that's just about you going even farther away from your 
uh, responsibilities and instead making it more for you and approaching it even more like an improv, an improv about staring at an ugly girl and freaking out. Now, you've tickled yourself at times, but in order to tickle ourselves with our human behavior, you have to have human behavior. Yeah. But to have human behavior, you need circumstances. Mm -hmm. And the circumstances are freaking out because I don't know if, I mean, I don't think I'm digging too deep here. I don't know if this girl is going to get out of my bed. If I knew she was going to get out of my bed and not put her lips on me, I wouldn't be freaking out. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I would just like you to make sure that you have those circumstances in your belly. Trust your gut to do them what it will. Don't put what I said in your head. Yeah. You're going to feel the responsibility to show me, see, I'm doing what you said to do. And then you're right back to showing what the scene will look like. But mm -hmm. anyway, this is a filmed half hour comedy. So yes, you can muscle some moments and make some choices, but throughout the scene for half the scene, you're going to not be making any choices and just see what happens. Okay. So I want to caution you to not approach it like a sitcom because you had some moments that you squeezed so hard or in other words, controlled so much that it was approaching sitcom territory because you can pre-plan shit and really squeeze moments in a sitcom. But mm -hmm. a film half hour comedy in the spectrum of acting is a little, is sort of halfway between a sitcom and a drama, you know, mm -hmm. where you're, where the audience feels like they're spying on you a little bit more than what we just saw, I think. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think so. So anyway, again, I thought it was a very good audition. It just, it's just about you wanting to have a, um, you know, they say this and they say, I like him, but I just wish we could have seen more of who he was. And actors hate to hear that because it's like, well, how the hell do I do that? And the answer is simple. You just even more approach every moment like an improv. What does it mean by improv? That it's really happening for the first time, which means you don't know what I'm gonna say and you don't know what you're gonna say and that anything can happen. So don't just go, oh no, I kinda know this section. Mm -hmm. You don't fucking know what I'm gonna <laughs> say back to you on every line, you know? Now, um, your arm, I don't know what it's resting on. It's on a sill, it's on a windowsill. <laughs> well, in an improv about freaking out, would I begin my audition with my arm resting on a windowsill? Maybe I would. Maybe, but, but then it would leave. <laughs> I don't know. Would it? You know, whenever a scene doesn't change, mm -hmm. it often means the actor's looking for an answer to that scene. And the thing is, you never want to look for an answer to a scene because a scene, just like life, is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And as actors, we must want to feel. And what must you want to feel in this scene? Freaking out. But nobody wants to freak out, so you push it down. But when you push down the seed of an emotion like fear or anxiety or panic, it grows stronger. You feel it more. And then the audience feels it more. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with having your arm on the sill at the beginning mm -hmm. of the scene. But because you did that last time, I recommend you don't do th that this time as a sign to the universe that you want to be surprised by how this goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm going to say some affirmations. We're going to talk for a moment. We're going to begin. First, let's talk for a second and just tell me when you were younger, was there um, um, a place that you would hang out to play games? Just to, for you to remember how you really think and communicate. Um, yeah, um, my, uh, my sisters, my cousins and I would play in my grandparents' basement when we'd go visit. Uh -huh. That was fun. They had like a bunch of like old timey stuff down there and we'd like you ever go through old boxes. Get hurt? Do you ever remember like being there when someone got hurt? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. What happened? Um, I like, I oh, yeah, I was in I was in Boy Scouts, so a lot of falls and a lot of cuts and scrapes and burns. Uh huh. Yeah. So um, release and destroy your need to be funny. You're just here to tickle yourself with your own genuine human behavior when you're doing an improv about staring at an ugly girl and freaking out. She wakes up. Shit. Take it from where you are. However you're feeling. However you're prepared. Mm -hmm. Yours a fine place within the scene and fuck the words. Hope you forget the lines because this is, if there ever was a scene about somebody who doesn't know what he's going to say, don't you think it's this one? Yeah. So hope <laughs> you forget the lines and have to just sit there like a dummy, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
fuck it, you're not even an actor, you're just here to be you and enjoy tickling yourself with your own genuine human behavior. And the director said, I already have it and it's perfect, thank you. So this time you don't have to do any of that stuff. So I guess this one's for you. Uh, take all the time you want, your permission to do it badly. Uh, just behave as if it's really happening and fuck it, right? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hi. Come cuddle with me. The cuddle window's expired. When? When I got sober. Don't tell me you were drunk when you had your tongue up in between my... Yeah, um, listen, Mary, to Veron, Veron? Teresa. For Teresa, right, um, Teresa. Um, I'm sure you have a lot uh, going on today, so you probably need to get a move on, so I would maybe get... Well, I mean, the day's already half over for some people. Like who? Like my mom. Listen, uh, last night was fun, somewhere in my subconscious, but... Okay, good, good. Uh, again, every time something surprised you, we felt it. It was like bang, and and that's that's what's funny is genuine human behavior. And you had a moment where you went like that. It's like you can't plan that. But you know, I'm not asking for uh, higher stakes because that would like really high stakes is what makes a filmed half hour turn into a sitcom. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm seeing the word freaking out in the stage directions. Yeah, I, yeah, Look, I see we, that as well. My take is we have one life to live mm -hmm. and you not enjoying freaking out is just dipping your toe in the water. Mm -hmm. And I want you in life to want to jump in. I want to jump in too. <laughs> okay. And what comes up for you when I share that? Do you go, oh, Jack, I thought I had the circumstance of freaking out in my belly and I was having fun being uh, affected by the concept of freaking out? No, I, th I, I don't think I was de definitely embracing freaking out as much as I... Um... Well, I think I book so much because I give them what they wrote. I just fucking give them what they wrote and it's always fucking obvious. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's just fucking obvious. But actors don't notice what they wrote because they get worried about things that have nothing to do with the circumstances, when in the end, circumstances are all we have. So mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about something that freaked you out. This is not for substitution, it's for you to remember how you really think and communicate. And then we're gonna bring that right into the scene and I want you to remind yourself that we've already seen the scene the way you ever thought to do it. Mm -hmm. And so now just go, well, now I just wanna see what happens and I'm gonna, and fuck it, I don't care, you know, fuck them. Mm -hmm. But when you were younger or at any age, did you have a moment where you thought you were going to die? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell um, us about it? Yeah. My, uh, my sister and I were swimming um, on the beach or at the beach and um, I got pulled by a riptide. What did you feel in that moment? I was scared. I will also confuse because I didn't know why I was swimming as hard as I could towards the shore. But I realized that you might die? When I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't breathe anymore. Oh, hey. Hi. Come cuddle with me. Uh, the cuddle window's over. When? When I got sober. Don't tell me you were drunk when you had all. Yeah, time. you know, um, me, me, Teresa, me, ver, Teresa. Teresa, right, Teresa. Um, listen, Teresa, I um. Okay, okay, good. So that was a beautiful beginning. Mm -hmm. And then you did go into sitcom land because you, you keep swerving to an old theater habit we have where we think our job is to share with the audience the scene. Yeah. And in film acting, you don't have to project your, your experience outward. We see everything. We see mm -hmm. it all. So just have the experience. But I want to again say that was a wonderful start. And where you... Um, turned left to a result-oriented place was you started that improv about not knowing her name beautifully, mm -hmm. but then you stopped behaving as if it was really happening. And you went from 
trying to remember her. You went from really trying to remember her name, which is how her line started, which was fucking beautiful. And it was enough to panicking and going, this can't be enough. And then you started showing us, I'm trying to remember her name. And we need you to really (laughs) fucking try to remember her name. That's an improv about not knowing someone's name and not wanting to get busted for it. Mm -hmm. And you started that way. Yeah. But then once you stopped doing a real improv about that, then it just went into, uh, it was hard for you to, to, to let go of that responsibility to show what the scene would look like. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, we don't, it's such a wonderful improv, that line. And the interesting thing is it wasn't until this last go when you really let go of your control of the scene that you understood that moment. Yeah. I felt it felt more past reads. I couldn't even tell that you understood what that moment was, which is an improv about not knowing someone's name, but hoping not to get busted this time. You knew it, but then Mm -hmm. you left it. And actually what you were doing was fucking easy. Wasn't it? It was easier before you took back the reins of the scene. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was. That line is so simple. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So anyway, I mean, it's just such a beautiful little improv that could be done a thousand different ways. Yeah. So anyway, great work. I point out that it was easiest at the end because I know it was because, yes, it was uncomfortable, maybe more so because you let go of your control of the scene. So that makes us really uncomfortable. Guess what? He's really uncomfortable. (laughs) So all of your controlling of the scene that you were doing still was just making you comfortable, which just made us comfortable. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Uh, great work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really, Jack. Terrific. Terrific. Thank you. Um, okay. So now um, we have. Uh... Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> what scene are you doing today? Um, I am doing, I thought I emailed it to you. It's, it's for an audition I have. Um, let me know if you don't have it. I can send it. Um, yes, you may have to because I, I don't. I'll look up your net, your last uh, email and see if it's there, because I bet it is. I can try to find it too quickly. I think I'm going to need you to send it to me. And I have to turn this fan on. Pardon me. Okay. Okay. Oh, there it is. Audition PDF. Is that it? Yes, that's it. Okay. Okay. Um, I have to download it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I did not notice. Now I don't want to print it. <laughs> uh, I'll be download this thing. I see. Okay. Okay, so tell us in a nutshell what's happening in this scene. And also, if they gave you a breakdown, could you please read that to me? The breakdown? Uh, Sure. Sorry, I have to go to the website real quickly. But um, so uh, what is happening is that it's a sci-fi and this person is sitting. It's a therapist scene. And they are telling the therapist why they cannot fall in love. And... The reason being is because they're a god (laughs) and a human's body experiencing life for the first time. And so if they fall in love, the world will catastrophically, our timeline will end and a new timeline will begin. And so um, they've fallen in love with someone. Gotcha. It'll kill the world. Uh, Can you read me the breakdown of the character of Ion? Okay. Yes. Sorry, just going to it real quickly. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Ion presents a blend of masculine and feminine expression. The bear, they bear the weight of great age and the spark of youth. Since this character is occupying a human body, androgyny and gender fluidity will be explored. Um, the great Greek god of unbound time occupying a human body. Aeon is going through their first experience of love with all the grace and dignity of a teenager and all the authority and knowledge of an ageless, cosmically powerful being. 
Aeon approaches the universe from outside of it, lonely, brilliant, and needy. Aeon uses a veneer of objectivity to hide the danger their unexamined emotions possess to our universe. Okay, so it's a drama, and I'm a little, con is it a movie or TV show? Movie. And is uh, there, a, is there, are you the only God in the film, or are there a bunch of them? Because they keep saying they, they, so I'm a little confused about that. I, it's a bunch of them, from my understanding, and also within the sides too, Aeon refers to we, and never I. Okay, and it says, looking for a subtle transition of the character from feeling human enough to gain our empathy to terrifying enough to inspire fear. Aeon exhibits vulnerability and fragility brought on by the knowledge that it's capable of destruction, but its attempts to explain its own power, the mass starts to fall, and as the audience, we get a glimpse of the villain lurking below. A lot there, yes. There's a lot. Can you get closer to your camera so that I can see uh, your face better? Yes. Ugh. Sorry. Is that better? Or should I even close? Well, I see what you're saying. You were awfully far away. So, okay. I think this is better. I just want to be able to see your eyes. Um, okay. Um, okay. You don't have to lean forward, though, like uh, lean back in your chair, but... Okay, so I see that you begin the scene, so whenever you're ready, um, we'll start. Okay. Since I am without time, I am without love. Everyone's entitled to love. I am only entitled to space. Only space? Space is infinite. Indeed, but it's not a feeling. If I were to express a feeling, it would be very dangerous. In what way? We cannot have love because if we have love, if we feel it, share it, create it, we would create a timeline that exists outside of space. Boundaries of universes collapse and this universe is blown into a vacuum of... Okay, good, I'm gonna stop you there. Good. What's your experience? Did anything come up you don't care for? Anything your vulture was saying to you? Yes, a whole lot. Um, because I just feel like the character breakdown for this is so complex. Um, if you did nothing, <laughs> better than the actresses going in and making a bunch of choices and trying to fulfill that stupid breakdown. Because they're going to project on you. They're doing the acting with you. See, actors think, no, no, it's all in my hands. No, it's not. They're acting with you. So what was your vulture saying specifically? Was it saying, like, you're not this character or you don't know what you're doing? What was it saying? I think, yeah, yes, I'm not this character. B, the lines, especially when I got to the point of, like, the chunk of monologue that I was about to get into, and I was just going, then I'm going a little bit too slow. And also it doesn't sound natural. Okay, but I release and destroy my need to sound a thing called natural. And instead I'll just behave as if it's really happening. The words, I'm just gonna throw them away. So I don't have to control the delivery of the words to make them sound a result oriented concept or quality called natural. See, your vulture isn't saying the truth. It's only saying what it knows you'll currently listen to. Because if you've got a vulture screaming at you, you can't behave as if this is really happening to you. Right. Uh, as far as character goes, I release and destroy my need to be this character because there is no such thing as character. And you can read my chapter called You Are the Character because the character is you in this character's specific set of circumstances. And again, if you did nothing, they project all those circumstances on you. Uh, so you, anything else your vulture was saying? Because I, I, I may not have... Um, talked about all, all of the different things your vulture was saying. Oh, well, you got, um, you just described, you got what I call paragraph panic. And when you yeah. see a bunch of words, you have to go, look, um, 
I release in the storm. I need to get these out in a certain schedule, you know, uh, because you're allowed to stop in the middle of a paragraph and try to remember the line. And you did. And I was glad that you were okay with that, but please be even more okay with that. Okay. You know? Yeah. I think the lines is what also got to me too. What about the lines? I, I caught myself looking down to like cat, catch the lines. And then I thought, it just took me out. Oh, I shouldn't be doing that. Well, look, I'm the acting teacher who recommends that you don't do that, but you're allowed to look down in an audition. Just try to look down, not when it's your turn to talk. But what I uh, share with actors is that the moment you don't know your next line and try to remember, it's the best moment of your audition. So I'm glad that today you wanted to take the joyful risk of practicing staying up and receiving the line because nine out of 10 times you will, because your brain is a supercomputer when you're acting. You know, and uh, you should hope you forget your line because it looks like the character's thinking and practically every scene you're ever going to play is a scene about a character thinking out loud. We never do scenes where a character knows everything they're going to say and say it. And yet actors turn every audition into a scene about a character who knows what she's going to say and is just saying it, you know. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that you took the joyful risk of staying up. But again, as you said, well, I didn't really. I kept looking down because I didn't want to be uncomfortable. But if you're making yourself comfortable in a drama audition, then we're comfortable. And that's not how we want to feel watching this audition. We want to feel so uncomfortable. We wish we could leave the room. Yeah. Anything else your vulture was saying? I think that's it. I well, think that's listen, it. Yeah. You put a, a lot of things as more important than behaving as if it's really happening. And we just heard you list them. And that's okay. We all are mean to ourselves that way. But if you look at the script and say, this is really happening to me, so what's happening? You're going to see what's literally obviously happening is that I'm sitting, I, 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 I say I, because if I was auditioning for this, then it, I, I have the role for those three minutes, right? I'm sitting in front of a therapist, really kind of ripped apart about this issue I'm having, which is I want love so much but I can't have it because it would kill the world. And yet I'm almost considering doing that. That's all. But I didn't feel like you had any circumstances. It just felt like you were just worried about getting it right. And that, that's okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But the first line is, since I am without time, I cannot have love. Now, we know, based on the description of the scene, that the character isn't saying, I cannot have love, or why would they have it this scene? The scene wouldn't be in the script if the character knew at the top of the scene that, she, that the answer is definite, she can't have love. Right? Mm -hmm. So? I want love so bad I could taste it because I'm like a teenager inside. That's how hungry I am for love and, and physical, uh, uh, you know. But it'll kill the world. And this is the first time I've been met with this. And in a way, a world is an ant to me, but I know I shouldn't kill the world, but I want, you know what I mean? Isn't it an improv about thinking out loud about this issue I'm having? Mm, yeah. Yeah. But think comprehension is always easy and obvious because it's always just, you get it by simply looking at the script and saying, this is really happening to me, so what's happening? And then it's easy to see what's happening. Those are the circumstances, we put them in our belly. <laughs> We're not gonna forget them, they're always obvious. And then we just do an improv about being in those circumstances. So um, we're going to talk about your life so you can remember how you really think and communicate. This gets rid of the moment when the scene begins and you're under pressure to get it right and act and remember the lines. In the middle of us talking, I'm going to say start the scene. Without looking at the script, I want you to jump right into the scene, but bring right with you into the scene how you really think and communicate so we can't tell the scene began. Okay. Uh, yes. When you were younger, where would you go when you wanted to be alone? Um, I would go to my, actually, I would go outside in our backyard. Good. And remember when the scene begins, we already saw the scene the way you, you did it. So you don't have to now just say, well, I'll fuck it. I'll just see what happens. I'm just going to bring right into the scene, how I really think and communicate. And where outside would you go? Um, I would sit on our porch 
And one of my favorite things to do was to draw pictures of the sunset. <laughs> and did you ever have a friendship that you knew you had to end because it was toxic, but you didn't want to? And you don't have to say any names or anything you don't want to say. Uh, yes. Where were you when this would happen? What age? Where were you? Gosh, I would say even as far as maybe five years ago. <laughs> we're, we're, to... we're about to do a drama audition. So try to just focus on remembering how you really think and communicate. And how did it feel having to decide whether or not to end the friendship? Hmm. I mean, it, it was, yeah, it was sad. It was. Did you ever, ever have someone you hurt their, you hurt them and you regret it? Yes. When you were younger, where were you when that happened? I was in high school. Start the scene. Since I am without love, I cannot have time. Well, everyone's entitled to love. I am not. I am only entitled to space. Please don't look at the lines. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do this again from the beginning. Look at the lines now, honey, and be okay with how uncomfortable you are when you don't know these lines, because that's how we wanna feel. This friend, where was the last time you saw them? Um, Start the scene. Since I am without, Love, I cannot have time. Well, everyone's entitled to love. I am entitled to space. Space is infinite. Oh, sorry, uh, only space? That's all you're entitled to is just space? Space is infinite. <laughs> Indeed, but it is not feeling. If, if I were to feel it would be very dangerous. In what way? If we were to feel love, share love, create love, we would create a new timeline in a space outside of time. This existing universe would compete with your timeline and the new timeline. And boundaries of existences would collapse. And this universe would be sucked into a vacuum of nothing. And all of the- okay, good. Um, Was that easier or harder than the first time you did the scene today? It was a bit easier, but it did feel very uncomfortable. Okay, so now we know that you have to feel wildly uncomfortable to give a good audition because that was terrific. And what I love about my acting workshop, if I must say so myself, whenever actors have a beautiful adjustment and an audition gets really good, they always say it was easier and also more fun because they got to be surprised, you know. And if it's better and it's easier, that means it's not better because you learn some new technique or some bullshit like that, it's better because you stop being involved in things you don't need to be involved in, which was anything your vulture was saying. Because that time, now your vulture isn't saying all those mean things she was saying before, is she? Yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. why. <laughs> all you gotta do next time you act is look to your vulture and say, no, no, I release and destroy my need for anything you're saying. So I release and destroy my need to be the character. I release and destroy my need to know these words. I release blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then you'll do what you just did so easily and so well. Because that was a beautiful audition. 
because now you're behaving as if it's really happening, which is what makes us castable. If you're not doing that, they'll never bring you back again because you're not castable if you're not behaving as if it's really happening. And the good news is it's easy. You maybe just didn't used to like how uncomfortable it made you. But now you know being uncomfortable is how you must feel. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's weird because I read your book and I was trying not to as I was working on the lines to imagine or practice how I was going to say it. But I still had this vision of like how it should go and how it just it happened. Have it. I never say the words out loud the way I might say them in a scene. And this is for a drama. I never say the words out loud the way I might say them in the scene until I'm doing the scene in front of the producers and the writer. And that's a gift you give yourself because your auditions become 100% spontaneous by definition. You don't have to pretend you haven't said the words like this. You never have, right? And the air is electric when you do that. Uh, and uh, you control that. Actors, you can keep your vulture from giving you ideas about how the scene should look and sound by simply telling it that's a shitty idea I'm not interested in and I'm memorizing. And don't do a thing called rehearse with your dramas. I don't rehearse for a drama. It would just make me more comfortable in the room and I don't want to be comfortable. I run the lines in a disinterested monotone rhythmic voice like, I want to go to putting all my focus on what I'm on what the words mean so that I have the tools when the time comes to perform the scene. And so now I'm going to give you my last note because you are going to audition for this role. Yes, one of the elements in this scene is that concept of pushing down sadness for a thing you can't have or a regret, right? But mm -hmm. also one of the circumstances of the scene is that I destroy worlds with no conscience. And when you're playing a villainous person, it's so easy because a villainous, is, a villainous person's circumstances are they don't care about how other people feel. They do not take care of other people's feelings at all. And to have that circumstance, all you have to do is, you know how I say, give yourself permission to hate your audience? Well, when you're playing someone like this, multiply by a thousand how much you have permission to hate your audience. Put that in your belly. It will affect the scene in ways you don't even need to understand. And I also need you that when you see a paragraph in a drama audition to tumble through it, I'm not saying to keep it moving. I'm saying, let the words spill out of your mouth. They'll get stopped by something bigger than you. And forgetting the next line is a great reason for the words to get stopped. Or maybe as the words are tumbling out of you, maybe a thought will surprise you and it will catch your, your voice in your throat. But right now you're slowing everything down because you don't want to not make, you want to make sure that you know every single word of the next thing you're going to say. And then you can't throw the words away. Okay. It's okay to let three words tumble out of a sentence and get stopped in the middle of that sentence and then have to think about what the rest of the, right? Start yeah. talking the moment you know the idea of your next line, because what's happening is you're not throwing the words away. And in a, when you see a big chunk of words in a drama, you've got to tumble through it, hoping something stops you. Okay, that's so helpful. Okay, great work today. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, guys, we're going to do one more, and then we're going to take a three-minute break. And the next person up is Tim. Um, there you are. Okay. Hi. How are you? Hi. Good. Thanks. <laughs> Glad to be here. Well, uh, thank you. And you're doing. I, I just I said I was going to do a monologue. You didn't, I didn't tell you what it was. I'm going to do oh, a, a. Right, right, right. Now, is this a monologue like that you use? Yeah, I, I've the, used it on and off. It's from it's from the movie Bowfinger, written by Steve Martin. And in a nutshell, what's happening in the scene? Because I've never seen that uh, movie. Okay, he's a he's a uh, an independent filmmaker, but he's really unsuccessful, and he has a crew of people he trusts, uh, somebody who gets equipment for him, actors, uh, and he feels like they're all going to leave him. They're giving up because he's not succeeded in anything, and he feels like he finally has a great script, and he's going to get them to stay with the script. Okay, so so he's talking to his crew. Yeah. And um, this is a comedy movie, right? Yes. Or draw, is it more like a drama? It's a comedy. Movie? No, it's a comedy. It's a straight up comedy. Okay. So we're going to treat this as if, you know, it's a film audition or maybe, you know, you're, you're auditioning for film agents or a film casting director. So okay. um, whenever you're ready, 
Oh, you know what? I'll just get rid of myself. If you, is that okay? Or you want me on screen so you can? I, I don't know. Me? I was going to ask you if you thought I should should try to speak to you or 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 to speak to the four people that are in the room. Uh, There's no right sure. answer. Uh, oh, let's. I guess. I guess I'll try doing it first without speaking to you then. Okay. So whenever. First of all, thank you for coming. I know things have been a little slow. We're not the big guys, we're the little guys. We never had muscle before, but now we do. Because last night, I read a screenplay that every studio in town is going to want. And how did we get this screenplay? Because half from here is a damn fine writer and account and part-time receptionist. I said, Ephraim, if you can write as well as you can add, I didn't even have to finish my sentence. 12 days later, he hands me this masterpiece, Chubby Rain. The aliens come to Earth in raindrops, making raindrops, chubby aliens in the raindrops. I mean, at the end of this movie, when our hero, Keith Kincaid, looks up at the alien tenant and says, gotcha, suckers. I, I mean, there's a moment. I will close this deal tomorrow. Just give me until then. Come here. You see that FedEx truck? Every day it delivers important papers to people all around the world. And one day it is going to stop here and a man is going to casually walk up and toss a couple of FedExes on my desk. And at that moment, we, and by we, I mean me, will be important. Okay, great, great work. You know, I apologize for some reason when I uh, took came off screen, your voice uh, got was no longer matching your lips, and so, but uh, oh. it was close enough that I could still, you know, enjoy okay. your performance. But um, sorry about that. I don't know. That's very strange. But anyway, so uh, good work. What was your experience with that? Did anything come up you don't care for? Was there anything your vulture was squawking you, uh, at you? Uh, because I have done this before, I guess my vulture kept on telling me, oh, you're, you're, you're doing line readings you've done before, but then I would try to, uh, throw that away and, and not, and, and just go spontaneous. Good, good. And I want to, you know, let you guys know that, you know, you can do a line reading you've done before, as long as you're behaving as if it's really happening, because there's new thoughts, there's new concepts, there's new feelings behind the lines. And that's why you can do a scene on set. 10 times and every take is usable, even if the lines sound basically the same because the circumstances haven't changed unless the director changes them. So I just wanna let you know, however, I'm glad that you said to yourself, you know, I, I hope to receive, you know, gifts of new new uh, line readings or things. So anyway, right. uh, anything else your, your vulture might've said? Um, I mean, I stumbled over a word and then kind of my vulture, <laughs> chastised me for that but i but well, what I also tried to go with it. say about that because whatever your vulture said was so loud and so mean you broke character in that moment you know but mm. when our vulture squawks at us essentially it's kicking our inner child in the stomach and that's mm. why we want to get our vulture to shut up so what did your vulture say about uh, about that moment i guess that it didn't practice enough or that i didn't do enough like sort of tongue twisters before i started to get my that, that kind now, of thing. Did you know people stutter and stumble and, and, and like don't speak perfectly in real life, yeah. right? Sure. So in a way, shouldn't we kind of hope that we get tongue tied and trip up? And I mean, this is not a scene about a guy who's practiced this speech, right? Right. No, so, I mean, he, I guess he, he may have practiced it a little because he called them there, but not word for word. I recommend that when you do this scene, you don't have the circumstance that I practiced this speech before they come in, because right. um, very little can happen to you if you do that. And in real life, we just don't tend to practice speeches. Like, it uh, just doesn't tend to happen. And I think the, the, it, that should be safe for very specific scenes. Um, but anyway, the universe sent you a gift of, 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 of something like that. Did you see what I just did? Yes. And, yeah. and you know, and instead of just going, well, look, however it goes, it was meant to go. And I'm not in control of the scene. My higher power is guiding me through it. And, you know, all the different things we can say, you know, instead, you, you know, let your vulture kick you. 
So um, I do recommend everyone out there to read the last chapter of my book. And it, it explains how to have a reality where there's no such thing as failure in your acting so that whatever happens, you embrace and are fine with it as opposed to thinking, oh, this wasn't supposed to happen. And now let me list the reasons why it's happening because you didn't practice enough and you didn't do your tongue, to, you know what I mean? It's a road your vulture wants you to go down so that you're not able to enjoy continuing to behave as if it's really happening. Right. Um, uh, anything else you want to share that was uh, either something you didn't care for or something that felt better than usual based on what you're working on? Um, I felt that there were things that came up that, that surprised me, which was nice. Uh, and especially when I was talking about the, the person who wrote the script, I felt like there was stuff that came up there that was new to me. And so you got to enjoy a thought or a concept or an idea that surprised you in that moment. And isn't that why we got into acting? Mm -hmm. What a joy, what a joy. <laughs> it's a selfish art because all art is done. The, the artist is making his art selfishly knowing that if he makes something he loves because we are all one, other people will love it. Now, not everyone's gonna love it and fuck the people who don't, but that's because art is subjective and you can't get people to like you. They're either gonna like you or not like you based on their own likes or dislikes. So all you can do is say, look, I'm letting you see me today. Those of you who like me, great. Those who don't fuck off, it's fine. Um, anything else you wanna share? Uh, I guess just that I, I always have this sort of self-consciousness with this, with that I'm speaking to like four different people and uh, that I'm always a little aware of like, where are they and that kind of thing. Well, if you're doing the night take, the director says, thank you for looking in the perfect spot each time. Right. But now you already have that. So now I don't care where you look and they could move around and it doesn't matter where you look. That's why the night take is so important. Hmm. Because that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, wherever you look, that's where they are. Who cares, you know? And the nice thing about acting is it's all faith. So my two words for acting are faith and trust. So I have faith that the secretary's there. And then if I look there the second time, then I have faith she's there. I trust that I'm in an office. I have faith I'm seeing people, but I don't really need to see them. I'm never going to really see this office and these people. But if I have faith I see them, then in the middle of acting, the universe may send me a gift of an image or a concept like, oh, the secretary just smiled for the first time in years. And I'm gonna to react to that, you know? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Anyway, yeah. I thought it was a nice audition, but um, I just want you to go further down the road of behaving as if it's really happening and letting right. go of your control over it even more and go further down the road of having faith that you don't know what you're gonna say because I think this scene is so much more fun if we get a guy who's thinking out loud versus a guy who brought the audience in to share these ideas that he's already mm. uh, knows well. We okay. already know that the guy's a loser, right? <laughs> Up until this moment, he's a bit yeah. of a loser. Well, what are the yeah. circumstances of loser for you? This is the fun part of being an actor because we get to put we get to decide what circumstances we want to put in our belly to fulfill what we think they're going for. Now, one of the circumstances for me that I put in my belly is that um, I feel like this could be something really great, but things hadn't, things don't ever work out for me, but maybe they're gonna for the first time this time. But I'm not. it's not like they ever have before. So I'm going to be pushing down my fear that things aren't going to work out, but also pushing down this joy that I feel like I maybe won the lottery and I'm going to have faith that I have no idea what I'm going to say and that I don't know if they're going to listen to a word of this. I don't know if they're going to turn on their heels. This scene, if you know at the beginning of this scene that they're going to listen to your next sentence, then the scene is over. You know what I mean? Mm. You yeah, don't yeah. know if any of these people are going to stay in the room. But you and you hope the things you say are the right things, but you have no idea if they are. Now, what I'm saying to you, don't put in your head and think I've got to now remember what Jack said and show it. I'm putting things that I put in my belly. In other words, throw them away. You're not stupid. Anything that you like will stick, and anything you don't is fine, right? Yeah. Um, but I do love this exercise. It gets rid of the moment when the scene begins and you're under pressure to act, and it also gets our vulture to shut up. So we'll talk for a moment about your life. But also I want to say, we saw the scene okay. 
You tell yourself, well, this time I'll just see what happens. I want to put all my joy into just having faith that this is really happening for the first time, which means, God damn, I need this script to get made. And I don't know if it will, but I feel like it could be great, but nothing great has ever really happened in my life. And I'm not wearing a very nice suit, right? It's a shitty polyester <laughs> suit and I and I probably have sweat stains in my armpits, but I, I got to make this work because if I don't, I'm going to be homeless. But anyway, I'm tickling myself with my genuine human behavior when I'm in those circumstances. When you were younger, what was a class that you just floundered in? You just didn't know if you could uh, get through it. Uh, math, <laughs> calculus. And again, you're just going to bring Ryan to the scene, how you really think and communicate. Tell me everything you had to learn in math and calculus. I need uh, 30 things in 15 seconds. I, I don't know. Well, I don't remember what the, these equations where it was like a line and, and one equation on top of another with parentheses and x's and y's and you had to do it all at once first of all thank you for coming uh, i know things have been all slow lately but we are not the big guys we're the little guys we never had muscle before but now we do because last night I, I read a script that every studio in town is going to want and how did we get this screenplay because half from here as a damn fine writer and accountant and part-time receptionist. I said, Ephraim, if you can write as well as you can add, I didn't even have to finish finish my sentence. 12 days later, he, he hands me this masterpiece, Chubby Rain. The aliens come to Earth in raindrops, making the good, raindrops good, good. I want to do the scene again. Good work. But listen, um, when I get to do a scene again, I always tell myself, Okay, now this time, I just want it to be all completely new. And so, for instance, I wouldn't recommend putting the people in the same place or physically okay. doing Because I'm seeing a very similar scene simply because you're not, I'd like you to want a little bit more to be surprised by how this goes. Secondly, okay. a scene is a series of improvs, meaning there's an improv in this scene where now I'm going to tell the story. Uh -huh. and, 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 and you have to understand that it's not just more of the same. Something totally new is happening. Now I got their attention and now I'm doing an improv about telling the story of this movie. You know, there's an improv where you have, where you suddenly realize, oh, uh, um, I want to talk about the, 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 the secretary, right? And when you say that, they, that they're the secretary, then you go on and you go, but also they, they also make the lunches, but also they, they also deliver the, the the thing you have to understand is that when you say they're the secretary, you don't even know you're going to continue to the next word. Mm. And if you do know you're going to continue to the next word, then it makes behaving as if it's really happening harder to do. So I loved how you started. But then what happened is, in my opinion, you kind of fell into the groove of the way you do the scene. Sure. And so I want you to know that we're telling this story from your life so you can remember how you really think and communicate, that you don't know the next word you're going to say, and that's okay. And then we're going to bring that right into the scene and you're going to try to trick us so we can't tell the scene began. You understand? Okay, okay so yes. good. So go. So good. So tell me, the, what were the cl classes again that you felt you were floundering in? I said math before, but now I'm thinking of typing. I did terrible in typing. I How couldn't make my fingers move. How did you feel in that class? What's that? How did you feel I that when you... I, I felt like it, I, I, it was an extension of not being a good athlete or something because I couldn't make my fingers move fast enough. What was a particularly hard exercise in that class? Uh, just, just, uh, just having to type fast, like you know, what just having to type like? fast. Uh, it was kind of dark and small, maybe about what twenty students. What was something you excelled at? Video games or? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm art, art, drawing. How did you feel uh, when you were doing that? An artist. Uh, Start the really scene. good. I, I still, um, first of all, thank you for coming. I know things have been a little slow, but we're not the big guys, we're the little guys. You know, we never had muscle before, but now we do. Because last night I read a screenplay that every studio in town is going to want. And how do we get the screenplay? Because Afram here is a damn fine writer and accountant and part-time receptionist. And I said, Afram, if you can write as well as you can add, I didn't even have to finish my sentence. 12 days later, he hands me this masterpiece, Chubby Rain. The aliens 
come to earth and raindrops, making the raindrops chubby aliens in the raindrops. <laughs> At the end of this movie, when our hero, Keith Kincaid, looks up at that alien antenna and says, gotcha, suckers! Okay, good. So was that easier <laughs> or harder than the other times? Uh, easier. It was easier. I wouldn't be surprised if it was, because we could tell that time you had no anxiety about how the scene was coming out because you were so purely and totally enjoying the wonderful uncomfortableness of discovering the scene in front of us. Now, why was I cackling with laughter? Because I, what makes a comedy is genuine, spontaneous human behavior. And you can't get any of that if you're not behaving as if it's really happening. But the moment you behave as if it's really happening, all of a sudden it's fucking hysterical. Why? Because the writer wrote a funny scene. Not because the way the actor has a clever line reading technique where it goes up at the end, you know what I mean? Now, yeah. you weren't telling me the story of the film. You were literally telling me the story of the film and the film is fucking stupid. <laughs> so now I could hear it. Right. But I couldn't even really hear it before because you were telling us the story of the film. Right. I mean, there were quotes around it, meaning you weren't behaving as if it was really happening. You were showing what the scene would look like in the finished product, which is never easy. It's hard to do that. It's harder to do that. And yet we do that because we let our vulture convince us that's what we're here to do. But that's also, um, anyway, that was just phenomenal. Absolutely. You're enough. Your experience is enough. Because you're human, you are a vessel full of, of infinite details and interesting things. When you pick up a script, the scene is in the air around you. It's just waiting for an honest vessel to funnel through. And it'll funnel through you differently every time. And you trust that your experience of behaving as if it's really happening is enough. Um, anyway, uh, any anything you want to share? Uh, thank you. No, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it's I've, I've done a lot of improv. And it's it's I guess it's it's nice to try to do bring that experience like i like the way you talk about that this improv or that improv happens in the scene because it reminds me yes. of what it feels like to actually do improv there is no difference between doing an improv and doing a scene except that in the scene you happen to know the words but the words are just the, that scene is never about the words it's about what's happening in the scene that's why the words we throw away it's about the thoughts images concepts feelings sound movement you know yeah, that's, okay. yeah. That was that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so um, we're gonna take anywhere between two to three minutes, just a little bathroom break, or whatever you want to do with your time, and I will see you guys when we get back. And I believe it's going to be Gabriella. I think. Um, okay, thumbs up. There we go.
Hi guys, I'm eating a sandwich. I was curious if anybody out there has any questions about anything I shared so far. Any questions? Okay. I'm gonna keep eating for a moment, sorry, because I'm hungry. Oh, look at that, there's chats happening. Oh, isn't that nice? Um, I love that you guys are writing to each other in the private chat, that's adorable. I'm gonna bring you up, Gab, okay? Hi. Hi. How you doing? How are you? I'm okay. What scene are you doing today? I haven't, I opened it. Laura. <sighs> Laura. Can you tell us about the, I don't know this scene. I gave it to you, but I don't know it. What is it? Yeah. Um, so she lost her daughter. Her daughter died and she just got served a restraining order against someone. Uh, um, Sorry, her daughter died, but wasn't murdered, right? Uh, no, that's not really implied in the, I think she so it just- says, It says Laura has just discovered Bailey shot her daughter. Oh. Oh, I think we're, I think you're looking at a different one. There might be oh, two. Oh, you're not doing Laura's bungalow kitchen night? No, this is bungalow <laughs> porch. <laughs> well, are you doing- Alan? Okay. Elani and Laura. Elani and Laura. Mm -hmm. El okay, okay, so what's the name of the file? Because I have to find it. Oh, let me let me see. I think it was just Laura. I think. Uh, uh, uh. And did you mail me this or did I mail you it? Mm, you mailed it to me a long time ago. Laura Sides. It's Laura Sides. Laura. D P yeah, I I emailed it, it back. Laura and Bailey? No, Laura and Alani. <laughs> I emailed it to you when I um and Alani. answered. Do you need the date of oh. the email? Do you I find it? it? Okay, so, perfect. Sorry guys. So now you were telling us about this. This is a drama, right? Yes. And tell us about what, in a nutshell, what's happening in this scene. Um, I'm Laura, and uh, she just got served the restraining order. And uh, her, I believe her neighbor is talking to her about it, basically. So we're on Mia's bungalow. And it says, Laura starts to run after Bailey, but stops. She doesn't have the strength. She looks back, her paper's crestfallen. Mm -hmm. And then Alani is your neighbor? I believe so. That's okay. just my guess, yeah. That's fine. And you said your daughter died recently and you have a restraining order against someone. Yes. Okay. Um, since I have the first line, just let mm -hmm. me know when you want to start and, and I'll begin. Okay. Tough day. You have no idea. Just got server restraining order. What? For being a moron, for uh, letting my fear and anger get the better of me. Lonnie. This restraining order is for three months. If that girl comes to the beach, I I can't work. What girl? I can't get into it. Well, what's going on? This behavior isn't who you are. It isn't. I have no idea who I am anymore. You need to get away. Can't get away right now. Have Mikey look after your classes. No, no, he can't. He can't look after Bailey. I can't leave now. She just moved in. Bailey moved in? 
Yeah. Last night. I told her she could stay as long as she want. Mia needs me and, and she need and I, I need her. Didn't you mean Bailey? You said Mia. Did I? Laura, pretending Bailey is Mia won't bring her back. I'm not pretending Bailey to be Mia. Laura, I understand why... You don't understand nothing. The, the truth is, I... I can't stand living in this house by myself. I keep thinking Mia's in her room and I... Fill the fridge with her favorite food and... I can't throw him out. And yes, Bailey, Bailey really does really need me, but... I really need her. Okay, good. Uh, you can come up. You don't care for anything your vulture was saying. Uh, oh my gosh. Um, oh, I don't know. Um, I feel like I didn't allow myself to feel. I didn't want to feel. I feel like I didn't want to feel. Why? I don't know. It's, Why do you think you didn't want to feel? Can you say it, it again? It's vulnerable. <laughs> do you think this character wants to um, go through, have this scene or go or go through this? Mm -mm. So the fact that you don't want to go through it completely aligns you with it. I guess so. Nonetheless, you only have one life to live, mm -hmm. and acting's fucky uncomfortable, and. The universe always pays off to a joyful risk. And if you just dip your toe into a scene, you're not taking ownership of it and you're not kind of living your life in this moment. You're putting your life on hold and going, I don't want to live my life in this moment. I'm going to shrink from this moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As an actor, you must want to feel. But remember, the character doesn't. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else you want to say? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's safe to feel very uncomfortable when you're acting. Mm -hmm. It's safe because there's no such thing as failure. And is there any reason why you think it might be unsafe to to feel vulnerable in front of people? Um, wow, uh, this is deep. Um, I don't know if anyone struggles with this, but sometimes it's hard to just be yourself. <laughs> and why? I feel like... Um, why? I'm okay. I'm waiting for you to share it with us. It's often a breakthrough when it's when an emotion comes up. Um, for you right now. Um, who, um, you don't just say anything you don't want to say, but it's often a breakthrough <laughs> when an emotion comes up. Um, so here's what's coming up for you, but you don't have to say anything you don't want to, so you can say, I don't want to talk about it. No, there's nothing specific in my life, it's just how well, the world is. is. Um, how the world is, yeah, just you know, how it's kind of hard to be yourself because I feel like people are judging you and I know it's stupid. And who, yeah. what is people ju are judging um, you from, your, from your childhood? Um, I don't know. It's okay. just, well, okay. Um, so if people are judging you first off, um, make sure to read uh, the chapter about how, when someone doesn't like you, so you <laughs> can understand that when someone doesn't like you, it's not about you. Uh huh. It's about them and their own dislikes. And right. you'll never get them to like you because they just don't like your type of person. And it doesn't actually mean anything about you. Right. <laughs> and that you have permission to hate them. So you can just be like, fuck 
fuck them. <laughs> they don't want to be in my life. I don't want them in my, I don't want them in my life. Mm -hmm. As an artist, you have to find your way to being okay, being seen exactly as you are. And to do that, you remind yourself that when someone doesn't like you, it's not about you. Yeah. I think this is what I'm struggling with. Um, just to show myself because, um, I guess you know. what showing yourself is the easiest thing in the world. Cause if you do <laughs> but just sit in front of us and breathe, we see you. Right. Mm -hmm. I see you right now, unless you sort of layer in front of yourself, a sort of thin layer of idea of character and scene to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. well, since you do that. Mm -hmm. Marion Williamson has a quote on my website about how we're not afraid of our faults, but about our greatness, but, You'd have to go find it. It's in that chapter, but mm. um, but you only have one life to live. Um, mm. Anyway, I want to remind you the literal obvious circumstances is that your daughter died recently. Mm -hmm. Now, when I act, I know that in the room, the universe will send me everything I need, which is I'll feel incredibly uncomfortable, vulnerable, and tense, and my heart will be racing. I'm fucking ready to feel, now just give me a circumstance to put in my belly. Oh, my daughter just died. As an actor, I want to feel, I want to feel, and in a scene like this, when that moment comes, I want to cry, because it's what the script says. But I remember the character doesn't, so I'm gonna push it down, but I've been pushing down the, the sadness and devastation about the death of my daughter and having to actually accept that she's dead for, a week now or two weeks, right? So it's already up here when the scene begins. I've been mm -hmm. pushing it down. When I push it down, it grows stronger, right? Mm -hmm. This entire scene is about what comes out later. Mm -hmm. But when you get to that moment, tell yourself, when you get to close your eyes, breathe, tell yourself, I'm going to just stop there. I'm in no rush to continue the scene. And universe, I ask you to send me a gift of an image or a thought that I might react to emotionally. And if you don't, that's fine. I have faith I have the character's thoughts and they're big ones and the words I'll throw away. But when you see a big chunk, you throw it away because it's, all, it's an improv about the last week of torture since your daughter died. Hmm. Take it from where you are. You're not even an actress and the director says I already have it. So. I don't care what you do, you know, uh, just want to surprise yourself and take all the time you want and you permission to, to do it badly. You don't have to make any choices. Instead, you'll just see what happens to you, the words you throw away, because you have faith, you have your thoughts and feelings. And I hope the audience feels so fucking uncomfortable watching this. And you'll do that by not taking care of it at all. And instead, just seeing what happens to you when you behave as if this is really fucking happening and you're going to take ownership of it. She's hiding, pushing down something. Here we go. Fuck it. Tough day. You have no idea. Just got served a restraining order. For what? For being a moron. For letting my anger and fear get the better of me. Restraining orders for three months. This girl comes to the beach, I can't work. What girl? I'm getting to it. Laura, what is going on? This behavior is not who you are. I know it's not. I don't even know who I am anymore. Okay, good. Good. Uh, please let go of your concept of this scene. We have an exclamation point on this line. Mm. That means shit is happening and it looks like this. Mm -hmm. This, this, this. Have faith you have her thoughts. They're big ones and they're racing. Mm -hmm. She was just given this thing that's overwhelming her because it, it, this means you don't have to know what's happening in this scene, but have faith something big is happening and it's not about leaning back is it sort of in a sullen, this is about thinking out loud because you're in a dark place and there's shit in her life that she does not know what to, how to deal with it. 
get up and walk all the way to the back wall, touch and come back. Because that's what's happening inside her. Fuck it. Tough day? You have no idea. It's got sort of a restraining order. For what? For being a moron? For letting my fear and anger get the best of me? Lonnie, this restraining order is for three months. If this girl comes to the beach, I can't work. What girl? I can't get into it. Laura, 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 what is going on? This behavior is not you. I know it's not me. I, I don't I don't even know who I am anymore. Wait, this is an improv about thinking out loud. Look, Laura, you need to get away. I can't get away right now. No, you need to get away. You have to. Now have Mikey look into your classes. But he can't look after Bailey. I, I can't go now. She just moved in. Okay, good, good, good. We're going to start from the beginning. I don't want you to take things I do and say that's the answer to the scene. I'll apply it to the scene. I'm looking for you to do an improv about being just served a restraining order, having no idea what to do, and your daughter just died. But if you're making choices, muscling moments, and taking care of the scene, then you're not having a rich, selfish experience. This is a scene about thinking out loud or else you're going to deliver shit to us. And mm. you tell yourself, you know what? I know the road I was walking down. I don't want to go one step down that road. I'd rather do nothing. Mm. Are you having a tough day? You have no idea. Just got served a restraining order. For what? For being a moron, for letting fear and anger get the best of me. Lonnie, this restraining order is for three months. If this girl comes to the beach, I can't work. What girl? I can't get into it. Laura, Laura, what is going on? This behavior is not you. No. It isn't. I don't even know who I am anymore. You need to get away. We can't go on a trip right now. Have Mikey look after your class. Uh, but he can't look after Bailey. I can't leave now. She just, she just moved in. You know, the thing about you is you will, you're very smart and you'll always try to figure out what Jack wants this time. And so we're gonna do the exercise that gets rid of the moment when you're under pressure to do a scene. And I, you've got to let go of the way you ever thought to say these words. But the goal is to bring right into the scene how you really think and communicate so I can't tell the scene began. But the literal obvious circumstances are, I fucking just got this. She looks at the papers crestfallen. You just got this. You've been just handed something that you didn't want many, many times in your life. And how that's going to look on the scene, who cares? When you were younger, what, was, uh, what were the classes you went to in seventh grade? All of them. This is just for you to remember how you really think and communicate. Um, math, literature, history, um, chemistry. What was that math? What was your hardest math class? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. And listen, in this scene, never do this. <sighs> because mm -hmm. she's holding these things that are doing this. Mm -hmm. Things are only getting worse. But she's pushing down. Your fucking daughter died. Did you have a relative who died? Yeah. Where were you when you found out? Uh, I just, I was just frozen. Where were you? Where were, where was I? Um, Start the scene. Tough day? You have no idea. Um, I just got served the restraining order. For what? 
for being a moron, for putting my anger and uh, fear to get the better of me. I need this. It's restraining orders for three months. If that girl comes to the beach, I, I can't work. What girl? I can't get into it. Laura, what is going on? This behavior isn't you. No, it isn't. I. Okay, so so listen, you're not going to be able to do this scene if you think that it, that Alani, this restraining order for three months, is this. Alani, this restraining order is for three months. You have to have faith that you're pacing inside, but you are just so married to that moment looking like that, that you're, get, you're in the way of the scene, dear. Mm. Mm -hmm. What got you the restraining order? You went to some guy's house. You fucking threw a brick through his window. You fucking idiot. Why do I, I I'm, my daughter fucking died. You got reserved a restraining order for what, honey? For what? For what? Why? Start. Why did you get reserved a restraining order? For being a moron? For letting my fear and anger get the better of me? Alani, this restraining order is for three months. If this girl comes to the beach, I can't work. What girl? What girl are you talking about? I can't get into it. Laura, what is going on? This behavior is not you. What is going on? I don't even know who I am anymore. Oh, jeez. You need to get away. <laughs> I go on a trip right now. Hi, Mikey. Look after your classes. No, no, he can't look after Bailey. I can't leave now. She just moved in. Bailey moved in? Yeah, last night I, I told her she could stay as long as she wants. Mia needs me and I need her. Oh, wait, don't you mean Bailey? You said, you said Mia. Did I? Laura, pretending Bailey is Mia won't bring her back. I wasn't pretending Bailey to be Mia. Laura, I understand why you would want- You understand nothing. The truth is I, I can't stand living in that house by myself. I keep thinking that Mia's in her room. Okay, so, um, <laughs> listen, you know, in, I, can't, uh, I would love to keep working on this. I can't anymore. That's what the whole scene is about. Mm. That moment that you just went oh, and dropped everything instead mm. of understanding that everything you were experiencing was about this moment, right? Mm. And instead, you just want to go like that and drop everything. But as you said, you don't yet feel free of anxiety about the concept of being uncomfortable and vulnerable in front of people. And maybe mm -hmm. that's why you're not wanting to deal with what's really happening in this scene. So maybe we will talk about that some other time. Or maybe, yeah. you know, we maybe need to just, not need, but maybe you'd like to set up a session. We can just talk about what that is. Because yeah. you were ready, honey. I mean, that was beautiful work. It was great stuff. And then I saw you start to, you know, let it go. Yes. Stop having faith that you ever thoughts and feelings. Stop wanting anything to happen emotionally. And everything you were going through about this is where this is. It was all about this thing, which is I can't be alone. I can't. I can't. I'm, you know, the ghost of my daughter is all around me all the time. And I can't, you know, I'm, this is, I'm just not, I'm not really acting right now. But you see, it mm -hmm. just comes filling out of you in a torrent of finally you felt safe enough in front of someone to say what's really happening yeah. and you just seem to want to do that that's okay yeah. forgive yourself unconditionally there was some nice work but you're going it's a lot of you going for a quality or answer for a scene instead of wanting to just say this scene is going to funnel through me if i behave as if it's really happening mm -hmm. okay see ya thanks uh okay so this is now Steven. Hello. Hi. 
Hi. Hi. So, how are you? Good. How are you? Well, after that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, no, it's just just uh, Gabrielle going through that. It was um, uh, it was amazing. It was kind of deep. So oh, had an effect on me too. Well, the scene we're doing with you. Yeah. Definitely not about sadness necessarily. Um, this is a, a hour long drama. It's from Cold Case. And um, you're playing the store right. owner of a raw food store and holistic center. I'm a cop who um, it says that you are a man wearing, I'm reading this for the audience, a man wearing loose fitting linen and eating a bowl of what looks like dried cranberries and that he laughs at this cop. And the cop is looking for evidence of a killing of, you know, a cold case that may have uh, taken place in your play, in your store. So because you have the first line, I'll let you begin when you're ready. Okay. <laughs> Are you kidding? Right not. <laughs> it's been 27 years since this building was Valentine's Five and Dime. You don't say. No. It's, it's, a, it's kind of out of the realm of possibility that you could find a 50-year-old boy. Could have gotten lodged in a wall or a floorboard. So, so what? No, you, you think that you're going to dig in my walls or my floors? Well, it's not out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> He's... These walls are fresh. I just had them painted. And my floors are Malaysian bamboo. So, you know, maybe you could look somewhere else for your phantom bullet. You find anything during that remodel? Uh, like a uh, bullet? Uh, no. As I find out you tamper with evidence, I'll stick you in the slammer with guys who ain't familiar with Buddhist teachings. You do. And the karma's going to be all over your ass. Great, good. So I'm going to stop you there. So what was your experience today? Anything come up you don't care for? Anything your voice was saying? My vulture was <laughs> judging kind of how it was going briefly. And what specifically was your vulture saying about how it was going? I, was I applying... Was I doing enough of not being... Planned. <clears throat> so your vulture wants you to think while you're playing pretend, you should also be listening to it talk about whether you're doing it right for Jack. So the point is the vulture isn't saying anything that's true. It's saying what it knows you'll listen to because it just wants you going like that when you're trying to enjoy acting with me. And right. that's why you have to even give yourself permission to hate me or you'll use my words to beat yourself up while right. you're acting. Um, so you would just say, I release and destroy my need to be to uh, do this correctly for Jack. I release and destroy my need to be spontaneous. I release and destroy my need to even be an actor. I'm not an actor. I'm I was just here to meet. Yeah. I didn't hear a word you just said because you went no, out. I, said was I, was, I was doing that before the scene. Yes, yes. But I'm just saying what you can say to your vulture while you're acting real quick to just get it stop talking about, am I doing this spontaneous enough? Anyway, um, anything else your vulture wanted to say to you while you were acting? Anything else your vulture squawked? No, I can't think of anything else. Okay. Now, is this your second time to perform with me? I forget. First. First time. Oh, okay. Um, is there anything that felt better than usual based on just what you're playing with for the first time today. Mm, not really outside of, of what you give to me, which. Okay. And um, 
Is there anything else you want to share about your experience of doing it? Other than hearing the echo in the room that I'm hearing right now was, was there. Um, that kind of took me out in my head a little bit. Now, um, my reality is that I'm never out of a scene until I break character and go, oh, I'm sorry, this echo is driving me crazy. Because right. what you have to understand is that they can't read your thoughts. Right. And when an actor has what I call an actor thought, meaning it's not your vulture saying you're a bad actor or hurry up and keep the scene moving. A thought like, oh, my voice is echoey. What you want to do is imagine that your, your brain is a room with two doors and the actor thought just comes in one door and out the other. But the problem is actors have an actor thought come into their head and they grab it by the shoulders and they go, what are you doing in here? You don't belong in here, you know? <laughs> it's fine. That, that, that's, that actor thought, eh, it's just coloring the scene. Who knows? It's not the goal. We don't want to have thoughts outside the circumstances, but of course you always will. Right, You'll be right. like, oh, that casting director just picked her nose or, oh, I just said <laughs> that line in a surprising way. But who cares? It's not breaking character and it just will color the scene in some interesting way. Um, okay. So anyway, I thought that was a nice audition. Are you from theater? Uh, not for, I mean, in and out. I mean, I've been in, oh, okay. in media. Okay. I was just curious about your background. Anyway, I thought it was a really nice audition because you were behaving as if it's really happening, but I didn't start booking dramas until I really committed to not making choices and instead allowing them to happen. Because what's happening today is you're just muscling the scene too much. You're making too many choices. And you're doing it because you're having a responsibility because you think, well, I know I'm not supposed to like muscle the whole scene and make all, but certainly I have to make a few choices, right? Just to make sure the scene looks good. That's how I used to think, right? And so my auditions were fine, but I wasn't booking. And it wasn't until I finally understood, no, you can't make any choices that I really took. It was like I had one finger around the safety bar of making choices. And when I finally took that finger off, I got to feel what drama acting on film should feel like, which is jumping out into darkness and trusting a net will catch you. Right. And to do that, you've really got to trust that if nothing happens, it's better than what you put there. Because you can't put things there. You could be in a, in, a, in a film audition when the camera's like this and they, they see and feel everything. And also in real life, we don't muscle moments and make choices. And they yeah. see it doesn't look like real life. So anyway. Yeah, I started, I think I'd planned, I started one way and then I read your book and I was like, oh, I wasn't supposed to do it. So it's like, I'm trying to not. I'm, I'm well, in, in the end, it doesn't matter how we prepare because you can always mm. let go of anything easily. But okay. what I recommend people is don't do any of that work that in the end you're just going to end up throw, throwing away anyway because you don't want to set grooves in that you're going to fall into and feel a responsibility right. to anyway. So in a drama, all your vulture wants is for you to muscle it or make choices. They mean the same thing. And because that way you won't get a call back. So what happened was you turned – your drama audition into a very nice filmed half hour comedy audition, not because you were trying to be funny, but because you were muscling it. Cause you can muscle moments and, and squeeze moments in a filmed half hour comedy. And it, and it did almost kind of feel like you, you were tickling yourself a little, and I wouldn't recommend doing that uh, in a, in this, in this scene necessarily. Mm -hmm. Cause if the, if the writing is sort of quirky or funny, it's in the writing. So okay. don't play into it. Cause it's just going to make you make, make choices muscle moments. Um, okay. Now we're going to talk for a moment then I will have you do that exercise. Cause I just love, I love to get to do it with newer people. Cause it's such a delicious exercise. But first I want to share with you a couple of things in a literal obvious circumstances are you're talking to a cop. Now, when I talk to a cop, I'm like, what do you need, sir? Anything. Right. But we know that this guy's circumstances are that he doesn't really care what a cop thinks or feels. Mm -hmm. OK, so that, there's that. And when you're playing people who don't care how other people think or feel, I just recommend actors give themselves permission to hate their audience so that they don't take care of their audience. Because because characters like that don't take care of the other people. They just have an experience and they don't give a fuck what anyone else thinks. Um, when we do this exercise, I'm going to talk to you about your life so you can remember how you really think and communicate. 
And then the goal is that when I say start the scene, you're going to just start the scene without looking at the script. You want to jump into the scene, but bring right with you into the scene how you really think and communicate so we can't tell the scene even began. Right. You follow? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And to do that, you want to let go of any way you thought to do the scene because, well, we already saw that anyway. And instead, <laughs> I'll just, I'll just yeah. do an improv about a cop telling me he's going to dig into my walls. And I just think that's fucking ludicrous. Right. And then you don't know what I'm going to say and you don't know what you're going to say. So when you were younger, what were some street names in the neighborhood you grew up in? This is just for you to remember how you did it. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, Brompton, Yadaruba, uh, St. Luke's. Uh, you went to? I'm sorry. What were the names of some schools you went to? Uh, Woodmore, Woodlawn Junior, Woodlawn Senior. Oklahoma was City there University. A teacher who was an idiot, not because not because they scared you, just just a bad teacher, just hated that class. Uh, yeah, Mr. Devon. Why? Well, Mr. Devon had a way of of uh, correcting something. I had once signed a blank paper start that the, was actually start the scene. You're kidding, right? Right, not. Uh, since it's been 27 years since the store is open, the holiday. The... Okay, good, good. It's very uncomfortable when you feel that feeling of jumping out into darkness and trusting a net will catch you. And what happens is, as actors, when we start to feel uncomfortable, we do things to make ourselves comfortable. But in a drama, that ruins your audition because an audience wants to feel wildly mm. uncomfortable watching a drama scene. And if you're comfortable or making them comfortable, they'll feel comfortable, i.e. bored. And so you have to be okay feeling wildly uncomfortable. You should actually want to feel wildly uncomfortable because that way the audience will feel wildly uncomfortable. Right. And so um, tell yourself, I'm not going to make any choice, which is liberating. If you just stood there and just waited till the words came out of you, that would be better than you feeling like you have to do things. Okay. Because again, this character doesn't do anything to make people comfortable. How did it feel being in that class that you uh, hated? And again, the goal is to bring right into the scene how you really think and communicate. And listen, hope you forget the words because this isn't a scene about a guy who knows what he's gonna say. So it's fine if you don't. Right. But anyway, how did it feel being in that guy's class who was such a prick? Well, given the fact that he kicked me, that we were out of the class, I was out of the class with some kids and we weren't allowed to talk to them for a period of time to as sort of a punishment. Um, it, it, the fact that I can remember his name. That they did that punishment? Yeah. You think so, that's fair? That sounds crazy. They didn't let you talk to the kids. Explain no, that. No, it was very well. No, it was very. It was very traumatic, and to this day, it's still in my mind. The fact that we were on a dodge playing dodgeball or whatever, we'd be sitting by the fence or whatever. Start the scene. You're kidding, right? Why not? Well, it's been 27 years since this building was a Valentine's five and dime. You don't say. No, oh, it's uh, kind of a out of bounds kind of thing, and and I, for that you would even find some fifty-year-old bullet. Well, we think it might have gotten lodged in the walls or maybe the floorboards. Wait, so what you you think you're you're going to dig into my walls and or my floors? Well, it's not out of the realm of possibility. It's just, these are fresh walls. I just had them painted, and the floor, my floors are, are Malaysian bamboo. So, you know, maybe you should look somewhere else for your phantom bullet. Find anything during that remodel? Like a bullet? Uh, no. Because if I find out you tampered with evidence, I'm going to throw you in the slammer with people who don't agree with Buddha's teachings. If you do, karma is going to be all over your ass. I'll be all over your ass, buddy, with a search warrant. Goji Berry? Hey. Hey. They're, they're make you happy. Yeah. 
if you eat enough of them, you'll never stop smiling. Good. Uh, was that easier or harder than the first time? It was easier. Was it more fun or less fun? It was more, it was more fun. I mean, yeah. Well, that's what I love about this workshop. Whenever actors have a beautiful adjustment and that, sir, was a home run of a drama audition, they <laughs> always say it was easier and more fun, which I guess means acting's easier and more fun than we thought. And if it's better and it's easier, that means it's not better because we worked hard on it or you learned some new technique. That would actually mean it's better and easier because you stopped being involved in things you don't need to be involved in. Things that make your acting harder and not as good, which was anything your vulture was squawking about. Because I'll bet that you'll agree that you didn't have any vulture squawking that time, right? Yeah. Oh, so that means next <laughs> time you're up, all you got to do is tell your vulture, uh, but, but, no, I release and destroy my need for anything you're saying. And then you'll do, even if it's true, vulture, I still release and destroy my need for it. Then you'll do what you just did so easily and so well. Uh, because really all that exercise does is when we're talking about our past, our vulture shuts up, right? And then when you jump into the scene, your vulture forgets you're doing a scene. Now, the affirmations do that better than that exercise. The affirmations make your vulture shut up better than doing that exercise because all that exercise does just reminds you how you think and communicate and see, Steve, you've been thinking and communicating all day. You don't need to remind yourself how you think and communicate. <laughs> You do have to let go of some things, which is all the new vulture squawks that are happening when you think it's time to act, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, that was a fucking phenomenal audition. And I would just say, you know, don't forget, though, that, you know, me talking about that teacher who was so mean to you is not for substitution. It's just I, I, I'm trying to get you to remember how you think and communicate but I might as well right. talk about something that's in the world of the scene. But you have to remember the scene is not about you and that teacher, or you're going to play the victim. Oh, the right. scene is about somebody yeah, yeah. who's picking a fight, right? laughing in a policeman's face. So I would just say, if you were auditioning for this, I'd remind you, when you, when you say you're kidding, right? Or when you say that's out of the realm of possibility, you're literally telling this cop to fuck off. That's why he throws your words in, in your face. Right. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, anything else you want to share? Just that I think this is, this is so, it, it's, it's like trusting just doing it this way versus, you know, the need to prepare. So that, I mean, it, it's good to prepare, but it, it's, it's, it's about losing it and really just not, like you said, not making the choices. Yeah. Yeah. And all I do to prepare I do believe in preparing. I just do so little that other teachers would say you're lazy. And what I say is, no, you're teaching actors a bunch of result oriented bullshit to keep them in your class for months and months. Right. Because the real actors on set aren't doing that shit. And I know that because we're handed scenes right before we shoot. They don't run to their trailer and call their acting coach to go over it with them. <laughs> I mean, you know, the truth is, in my book, healthy comprehension, healthy, uh, healthy preparation for a drama audition, well, really for all auditions, is just memorize and scene comprehension. And you mm -hmm. can read how I do both in my free book. And then if it's a sitcom audition, then I pre-plan some shtick. But I don't do that till I'm at the audition when my heart's racing and my brain has expanded and brilliant ideas come to me because I'm plugged into my higher power. Now that does not make me lazy because as an actor, our job is to be acting all the time. And right. so I'm always making content, filming funny videos, putting up a play, putting up, making, you know, that's the work of an actor, not studying in class or, or hunched over a piece of paper, making notes about fake things called actions, beats and objectives. Now a teacher can convince you those are real things, but in my opinion, <laughs> They're not how I live my life, so why would I do them with my acting? Then I'm just involved in something I'm not involved in in my real life, and, and acting in a drama is a mirror of real life. Anyway, again, I want to say 
uh, what a beautiful audition and what a gift for us to get to see the difference, not making choices, but instead allowing them to happen. What a difference that makes in a drama because plenty happened in that audition. You know, when the camera's like this in a close up of a drama, we see and feel everything you're going through. I mean, we, we see a new, we see and feel a new thought pass behind your eyes, you know, and a lot happened to you in that scene. And that's the goal to have things happen to you. And, you know, if the circumstances are larger and, and the script says things like he screams or he bangs his fist against the table or she sobs uncontrollably, those are circumstances and you hope that all of that shit happens to you. But you try to experience right. it not as though you're making it happen, but that it's happening to you based on the circumstances. Okay. Anyway, right. thanks. Great work. Thank you. And thank you for your book. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. So up next, we have two more people, I believe. Yes, Janet. Hello. Hello. You're doing Heidi? I'm doing Heidi. Heidi. Okay, great. Well, Heidi is a filmed half hour comedy, and Heidi is entering her roommate's bedroom. And uh, you have the first, it says Heidi knocks and enters. You have the first line, so just whenever you're ready. You can begin. Okay. Do you have a minute? Not really. Okay. What? Well, I've just got to find the right words here. I want to say it. Well, I want to say it, but I've got to, you know, the best way to say it. No, no, just say it. Oh, no, I need to use the right words. It, you know, it's uncomfortable. I want to find the right words. Okay, how about, I don't have time for this. Okay. Um, Speed! Oh, that's not it. That's not it. I just, I just want to tell you, you're a twat. Uh, wow, harsh. I know. That's why I was looking for the right words. Why am I a twat? I guess I, sh I should explain. Yeah, that would be helpful. It's just that I don't appreciate when you tell people that I'm limited. I'm not limited, I'm special. Y yeah, that is a way to put it. See, there you go you know, under, underfooting me again. Underhanded. All right, all right, enough with the condensation. You want me to stop being water? Is that, that what you're saying? Is that... You know what I mean. I know what you mean and you're being mean. What do you want me to do about it? I want you to stop it. Note it, I'll stop. You will? Yeah. Really? Because I don't want you to do anything that you don't want to do. Then what do you want from me? Can I think about that? No. Okay. Good talk. <laughs> okay, good. What's your experience with anything come up you don't care for? Anything your vulture is saying? Uh, well, yes, because I, I boggled some lines, but it was kind of fun to boggle them too. But I kind of went, that vulture is kind of like, oh, you really screwed the lines up. And then I came back in and I thought, well, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Just try not to put it as an in and out thing. Okay. Obviously you were always in the scene because we can't read your thoughts. That's right. That's instead, right. Instead, okay. just say, my vulture squawks sometimes while I and act, but I can say something back to her like, fuck it, but I'm fine. And, yeah. and, and um, then my vulture shuts up and, and it's just easier to behave as if it's really happening. But in the end, they can't read my mind. So who cares? Okay. Uh, but again, your vulture said, what was it it said about the lines or what did it squawk about? It was the lines. Because I bought, I, yeah, yeah. What? What about the lines? 
you know, you didn't, you, you got to get them right. You didn't get them right. Oh, you really, you really screwed up there. Okay. So you've got a lot of get it right. When the director just said to you, you don't have to get it right this time. Cause I already have it on film eight times where you get it perfect. So now I don't care if you get it right. As a matter of fact, you have permission to do it badly. Okay. So in other words, I release and destroy my need to get it right. Sure, I want to get it right. But I don't need to because I'm not in my childhood anymore. I'm an adult and I can do whatever the fuck I want. You know? Uh -huh. And we all know you're never going to book a job because you said all the words right. Right. But you'll lose exactly. job after job after job if you put getting it word perfect is more important than your selfish enjoyment of playing in the circumstances, right? You're allowed to paraphrase and until you embrace that totally, I'm talking to everyone, until you are completely okay with paraphrasing, it's not the goal. The goal is to say it word perfect. But until you're totally okay paraphrasing, you'll never book work because you'll always put getting it word perfect as more important. The most important thing, and it is not. You're allowed to paraphrase. It's not the goal, though. You want to say a word perfect, you just don't need to. And if you, So stop with this word bungle or boggle or whatever word you're using. There's no such thing as that. Okay. Okay. I, I paraphrased. That's I paraphrased. Perfect. Anything else you want to share? Anything feel better than usual based on the work you're doing? Well, yes. One thing is I, I didn't uh, make the time to, to memorize the, the lines like I usually do. And I let that go and it felt so much better. Yeah, that's fine. Some auditions, you just don't have the time. And when you don't have the time, or when you just are unable to find the time, you just say to yourself, look, I can't be more memorized. This is how memorized I am. And if my vote is squawking about how I'm not memorized enough, it's going to make remembering the lines harder. So I'm going to go in there, be totally fine with not knowing my lines, because the moment I'm trying to remember my next lines, the best moment of my audition. Um, also, I'm going to have to paraphrase more than I want to. But I want to stay up and I don't want to be looking down for every line. So I'm going to have to paraphrase a little more than I really want to. And worst case scenario, if I stay up and the line doesn't come, then I'll look down. Right? These are all the things I say to myself. But I also remember, you know what? This really aligns me with this character because I really don't know what I'm going to say and neither does she. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just... I definitely learned that it's not the, the auditions that I had more time to memorize that I book. It, it, it's 50 50. It's like I have auditions where I've had no time and I book them, and then where I've had all the time in the world. But yeah. it's not like, oh, I had all the time in the world to memorize it, so I'm going to book it. It's never like that. Okay, anyway, you know, I'm just so proud of you. You just keep coming in and giving these lovely auditions. I love that audition, and I just kept laughing because of your genuine, spontaneous human behavior. And I guess my note for you is I just want you to allow more things to surprise you. And I think sometimes what can happen as actors is we just go, okay, this feels good. This, I'm not getting in trouble by doing what I'm doing. I'll just keep doing it. But the goal is actually not to avoid stepping in shit. It's the goal is to step in shit. Okay. Is to constantly allow the scene to change. And you do that by really approaching every moment as if it's really happening for the first time, which means you don't know what I'm going to say which means what I say surprises you. And that's not something you act, that's something you, you, that's something you have faith is. And then that you don't know what you're gonna say and that's not something you act, it's something you have faith is happening. But if you kind of feel like you know what I'm gonna say and then you kind of feel like you know what you're gonna say, the scene is just gonna go ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum yeah. right? Yeah. And the goal is I want them to see so much of me and so I wanna keep allowing the scene to change. I don't have to make it change. But there's these series of improvs. Why, why approach every improv the same way? There's an improv that happens when she goes, okay, it's your time, step up to the bat and tell me what's wrong. You didn't know that was gonna happen. If you had thought ahead, you would have given more thought to how to say it. Or there's an improv about realizing that you just yelled the, the secret thoughts that you never planned to say. You know what I mean? 
Okay. It's a series, the, the scene is a series of improvs about obvious things that you're going to get to do an improv about. Okay. You know what I mean? I think I need, I think I need to work more on scene comprehension. I think I'm missing things. If you're missing things, it's only because you made, scene comprehension is always fucking obvious. Okay. And scene comprehension is super easy. But it, it's hard when we let our vulture squawk and say, you're in a scene, because then your vulture goes, a scene, you better figure out how it should look and sound and how, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can't understand what's happening in the scene because you're no longer looking for what's literally obviously happening in the scene. Okay. I don't think you need to work harder at it. I do think you could reread the chapter so you can remember how easy it is. Okay. Because it's obvious what's happening in the scene. The opening moment is an improv about knocking then entering. Now you can skip it the way you did and book the job, but I certainly don't. The universe pays off to a joyful risk. And if you knocked and had faith that you're stepping in or even move your chair closer, let us, you know, whatever, do an improv about knocking and then entering her bedroom, something will be delivered to you. Something. Okay. And if not, that's okay, because at least the director will see, oh, there's that, oh, there's that character, Heidi, and I wrote that she enters, and she's entering. Even if, you know, even if you don't actually enact it, but have faith it's happening. Okay. Also, she turns to go. You skipped it. Oh, I did. Yep. 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 They both work, because I give them what they wrote. They wouldn't have written it if they didn't love it. Yeah. But also more will happen to you because you'll be more aligned with her circumstances because you will literally be turning to go and then you'll get to do an improv about turning back. How yeah. that looks, who knows? It'll be different every time. Yeah. How you feel, it'll be different every time. You're just tickling yourself with your own genuine, spontaneous human behavior. So let go of any way you've done the scene because I'm going to be the director now and then we're going to do the scene. Well, first off, release and destroy your need to be funny. You're just here to put yourself. You're not even yeah. an actor. All I want to do is surprise myself. The director says, thank you so much for bringing in all those beautiful choices. They were perfect for the scene. And I have them all on film perfectly, and I'm going to use them. So since we're done, and I'm never going to look at this cake, wow, I guess that means you don't have to do any of that great stuff you brought in. I guess you can just behave as if it's really happening. Just want to surprise yourself. Oh, take all the time you want and you have permission to do it badly. I'm never going to use this take. I'm never going to look at it. Here we go. Do you have a minute? Not really. Okay. Wait, what? 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 Um, I'm... I'm I'm trying to think of how to say this. Okay, we'll say it. Okay, I'm looking for the right words. Well, just say it. <laughs> it's uncomfortable for me. I want to find the best words. Okay, good, good. I want you to bring right into the scene how you really think and communicate so we can't tell the scene began, okay? Okay. You want me to start it? No, start I'm going to tell you when to knock. Oh, to knock. What did you have for breakfast today? A smoothie. Who was your friend in, in elementary school or, or middle school? Kathy Cummings. Now, do you know that right now you're doing an improv about being in front of the class and not getting scolded? Okay. You're showing me a student or a soldier who doesn't want to get reprimanded. And that's not who you are. You're a beautiful, loving spirit of the world and you are a gift to humanity. And this is not a test. This is me giving you an opportunity to remember how you really think and communicate. You have permission to hate us. Where do you buy your groceries? Gelson's. Why? It's close by. And you said your friend in middle school was who? Kathy Cummings. Yeah, why? What was she like? 
she was just a lot of fun and we used to spend the night at each other's house and we'd make what was her kid that you desperately wanted to be friends with but they were cooler than you uh kathy queener yeah why she just had this big blonde hair and all the boys liked her Okay, this is a scene about somebody thinking out loud and they have no idea what you have no idea what I'm gonna say, no idea what you're gonna say. Knock on the door. Do you have a minute? Not really. Okay. What, what? I'm trying to think of a, a way to say this. So say it. Oh. I don't know what I don't know what words to use. We'll just say it. But I need to use the right words. This is so uncomfortable. Okay, how about I don't have time for this. Ah, uh, no, that's not it. Just speak. Okay, you're a twat. Wow, harsh. Well, that's why I was looking for the right words. Why am I a twat? I guess I should explain to you. Yeah, I think that would be helpful, Heidi. I don't appreciate it when you call me limited because I'm not limited. I am special. Yeah, that is, that is one of the ways to put it. Now you're being underfooted. You're I'm underfooting me. Underhanded. Ah, oh, there you go. Good, with good, the good. So what's your experience of that? Much more fun. Why? Because I wasn't in my head. There is no such thing as being okay, in your head. Because, my, in because your head. My, the words weren't squawking at me. The vulture was silent. Yep. 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 Your ego is your enemy. It's the half of you that wants you to fail, to be miserable. Yeah. Make sure you get it out of your head and don't let it whisper things that make you feel pressure. Okay. Okay. You, you got to put the most important thing is, look, I may not be memorized enough. I may not know the right way to do the scene. I mean, but I just want to behave as if it's really happening. So what's, what's, if this was really happening to me, what's happening? Okay. I knock on the door and then I enter. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And then past that, you just want to be surprised. You know what I mean? Um, damn, that was funny because when your behavior is, if it's really happening, then you, then the audience gets genuine human behavior and a genuine human behavior is hysterical because humans are weird. Now I liked your first goal <laughs> tonight, but I liked this one even more Yeah, yeah. because you had less vultures squawking and you enacted more moments and I got to, so I got to see more of who you are and you let the scene change a little more. Yeah. Okay. Good work. Thank you, Jack. You're welcome. Okay, Lisa, yes. last one up. Hi there. Hi. Um, I I'm I want to see if I can stand up during this. Is that possible? Right. Yeah. See. I mean, hopefully you won't be too because this is a drama. I'd rather if you're not too far away from the camera. And if that's just so far away. Oh. Well, then I can sit down. I, I mean, I just thought I'd try it but i i kind of this, often, I'd have to sit this down. often happens that the casting person will say sorry we, we you have to sit and all you got to do is just sit but have faith that you're standing okay it's as simple as that so this is a drama scene and in a nutshell what's happening i have just seen um i have just watched uh through my window um a car accident and these um, NCIS people um, have been checking out the car and then they see me across the street um, and they think I might be a witness so they come okay. to and it says that the cops have coaxed Agnes onto the porch it said it, for the audience at home it says 60s eccentric dressed in a snuggie covered mm -hmm. with cat hair clearly she's clearly thrilled by the excitement but dot 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 now if you're sitting in a chair and you wish you could stand but they won't let you you could sit on the edge of the chair so that you're not leaning back and then okay. you're standing, you know, that's one thing you can do to give yourself more of that sensation. But anyway, it's a drama scene and you have the first line. So I'm just going to, when you're ready, 
Go ahead and we'll we'll do the scene. Yeah, I have to understand. I'm I'm not one for getting involved. But did you see the crash? Heard it. Brought me up from my TV just as Alonzo was telling Chastity he's not really her half brother. I'm sorry, Alonzo and Charity. Uh, uh, my stories. <laughs> I knew it all along. You can't trust them Latin lover types. Uh, so what did you see, ma'am? Oh, well, what, um, when I got to the window, just I got there just as the other car went speeding off. And what, what kind of car was that? Blue. One of them SUVs. No, wait, no. It was green. Green for sure. <laughs> or gold. Did, did you happen to hear anything else? Like um, gunshots? Oh, Lord, no. I can't imagine that girl would have come running out of Jimmy's truck if there had been gunshots. So there was a girl? Yeah, pretty blonde. She ran, took right off into the woods. There was a blonde girl. So you know, you know, Lieutenant Will? Jimmy, man's a war hero. Is he gonna be all right? The girl, you recognize her? Well, no, but I will tell you, um, it wasn't Mrs. Jimmy. Not that I'm one for getting involved. The Lieutenant has a wife. Or Kara, she sings in our church choir. They always looked happy. Good, good. Not there, good. What's your experience? Did anything come up you don't care for? Anything your vulture was saying? Um, my vulture was saying uh, a little bit. Um, you're worried too much about being funny. <laughs> if you become aware that you're muscling a scene around the concept of funny, because all your vulture wants you to do in a drama is make choices and muscle moments, right? To ruin your audition. When you become, when or if you become aware that you might be muscling moments out of a uh, desire to be funny in a drama, you don't want to say, you're muscling moments. Because that actually, I have found that doesn't really help. Instead, I use the positive, affirmative, and loving voice to say, hey, you don't have to make any choices, not one. Because that will actually get me to stop muscling it instead of just being involved in yelling at myself for doing something wrong, you see? <laughs> I release and destroy my need to be funny. As a matter of fact, I'm not even really gonna tickle myself because it's a drama. The writing is what makes it funny. The okay. fact that you know what I mean? The situation makes it funny. If you want to tickle yourself a little bit in a dramedy, you can, as long as you don't make any choices, but this is NCIS. It's not a, really a dramedy. So you wouldn't even want to tickle yourself at all. It'll just lead you down the road to muscling moments. Anything else your vulture said? And by the way, I'll just say it, you were. It was a beautiful audition for the first like third, and then it was just way too many muscles. You can't do okay. that in a drama. All right. Okay. And and we know why, because you, well, I'm guessing you felt a responsibility to fulfill something you thought was funny about this character. Yes. And trust me, you were. Okay. But then we couldn't enjoy it anymore because it was no longer real life. You, you were no longer doing a drama. Yeah. Okay. Anything else your vulture said? No. Anything else you want to share about your experience of it? Um, at times I had trouble hearing, but that's not anybody's fault. Yeah. And then you just have to have faith you hear what I'm saying and wait okay. till I stop <laughs> my lips. Because in the end, it doesn't matter if you really hear me. We can't read your mind. So again, I want you to know I loved that audition for the first third. <laughs> and then it became a, like a you know, filmed half hour comedy. Ooh. But I want you to fucking book this. And I tell you, when I'm doing a drama audition, 
I don't just tell myself I'm not going to make choices, but more importantly, allow them to happen. I say to myself, I'm going to go further down the road of not making choices than I've ever gone. I'm going to go further down the road of just throwing away the words and hoping the audience feels fucking uncomfortable than I've ever gone. Mm -hmm. Yes, the circumstance in your belly is that you're glad they're here and that you're very interested in what's happening. But if you then feel responsibility by putting that in your head to show us that, it's going to make you muscle the scene. Yeah. I love cats. I'm terribly interested in everything happening in my neighborhood. I'm so glad I caught some of what was happening because it means I get to be talk to these police. But when I say put it in your belly, I mean throw it away. You're not stupid. You're not going to forget what I just said to you. That stuff's obvious. The more important thing now is to say I'm not going to make any choices. Not one, because if nothing happens, they'll project on it. Because more importantly, I'm going to allow choice to happen to me based on the circumstances. Number two, the words, I'm just going to throw them away. They'll tumble out of my face. I have faith I have her thoughts and feelings. That's what matters. The words I'll throw away. Number three, I hope they feel fucking uncomfortable watching this. And I'll do that by not taking care of the scene at all. But instead of only being interested in my experience of behaving as if this is really happening to me for the first time. The director says, thank you for bringing in all those brilliant choices. I have the scene that lives in those eight, eight takes. We're moving on. Well, you know what? If we're doing it again, I guess that means you don't have to do any of that brilliant stuff. I'm never going to look at this take. I guess you can just behave as if it's really happening and just want to surprise yourself. Oh, um, take all the time you want and you have permission to do it badly. I'm never going to look at this take. Fuck it. Here we go. You have to understand, I'm really not one for getting involved. But you did see the crash. Heard it. Got me up from the TV just as Alonzo was telling Chastity he's not really her half-brother. I'm sorry, Alon Alonzo and Chastity. My stories. I knew it all along. I can't trust them Latin lover types. Um, what did uh, you see, ma'am? Oh, I got to the window just as that other car was speeding off. The other, uh, what kind of car was it? Blue, one of them SUVs. Um, oh wait, no, um, it was green. Green for sure, or gold. Did you happen to hear uh, anything else? Like uh, gunshots? Lord, no. And imagine that girl would have got out of Jimmy's truck if there were gunshots. So there was a girl. A, a pretty blonde. She took off and ran into the woods. So you you, you know Lieutenant Will? Oh yeah, yeah. Jimmy, man's a war hero. Is he going to be all right? The girl, you recognize her? No, I, no. I will tell you it, it wasn't Mrs. Jimmy. Uh, you know, I thought they seemed happy, but now that I think about it, maybe a little too happy, if you know what I mean. I do not. Well, for appearance sake, you know. Like um, they were covering up uh, an awful truth that no one else could see until now. Oh, it'll pay me so to have to call. What, you know, I, I forgot to tell you, I forgot it. Kara, Kara is Jimmy's wife in our church choir. But okay, 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 okay. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Well, you went back to get a line that we passed a long time ago, and I would say, don't, don't do that. Once you don't pass worry line, about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, listen, Lisa. Um, 
that's a better drama audition, but you know, out the window went all the fun she's experiencing because I know. you took what I said and turned it into a quality that you thought would not get you in trouble. Meaning you just said, well, I'll just do less. I'll just kind of put a heaviness on this scene. And then out went the, she's clearly thrilled by the excitement. So Lisa, you really got to not see me as a teacher or a, or a sergeant, but okay. as an equal or even a child, you're, you're the adult and this is okay. your art. And you want to have an a, a, a experience where you want to feel, but remember nobody wants to start screaming in delight. And you certainly, but, um, and then I would just say, uh, we got a lot of the same line readings and, to, yeah. and, 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 and that's because you, I really, if you memorize good line readings, please let them go now because those lines are ideas, they're concepts, they're words that you understand the meaning of that your goal is all I want to do is be surprised. And if I just throw away the words and let them tumble out, then they can be colored by something bigger than me. This is subtle stuff because that was a very nice audition. It's I'm just giving you the notes for to make it even better, okay, honey? And mm -hmm. then um, when you're mad at yourself or when you're like frustrated, you'll do a big thing like, Pah! you know, and you don't have to do that. You do it to alleviate uncomfortableness. All right. You you know what I mean? Yeah. The camera's here. The camera will come to you. You don't have to come to it. You just be doing an improv about thinking out loud. But God, she loves her stories. Yeah. She loves them. And the soap opera is equal to the thing happening out there is equal to the, take a moment to look at these lines, okay? Yeah. We keep, we keep losing the pretty blonde, ran off into the woods, or maybe it was red, the SUV. Oh, pretty blonde, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, who cares? They don't care. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's an improv about what kind of car was that? Blue, period. One of them SUVs, period. No, wait, it was green, period. Green for sure, period or gold. So that's a tool that you hope will be colored by something bigger than you. Because you'll do an improv about trying to remember what color a car is when your memory isn't so great. But that's for you, not for us. You don't have to show me that. Just have faith that's what's happening and do an improv about it. And it'll look different every time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're not an actress. Just take it from where you are. You're just here to be you and enjoy playing the circumstances. You love soap operas. You're excited that you're out here on the porch. Put this in your belly because you're not going to make sure you're going to go farther down the road of not making choices, throwing away the words and hoping that you feel fucking uncomfortable. Take it from where you are. Um, it's an improv. The director said he already has it. It's the ninth take. So this one's for you. Here we go. You have to understand I'm, I'm not one for getting involved. But you did see the crash. Heard it. Got me up from my TV just as Alonzo was telling Chastity he's not really her half brother. I'm sorry, Alonzo and Chastity? My stories. I knew it all along. Can't trust them Latin lover types. Uh, what did you see, ma'am? Well, I got to the window just as the other car was speeding off. Yeah, what kind of car was that? Blue, one of them SUVs. Wait, it was green. Green for sure. Or gold. Well, uh, did you happen to hear anything else? Maybe like gunshots? Lord, no. Can't imagine that girl would have got out of Jimmy's truck if there had been gunshots. I'm sorry, there was a girl? Pretty blonde. She just it's took off her man into the woods. Fine. This is fine and it's a very lovely audition, but I want you to go further down the road of understanding that every scene you're going to do pretty much is going to be a scene about somebody thinking out loud. So I'd love it to feel a little more of how you really think and communicate, which is you're not handing the people you talk to concepts that you know, 
but that words are tumbling out of your face because you're having to think as you're talking. So let's remind you how you think and communicate by doing the exercise and then bringing right into the scene how you think and communicate so that we can't tell the scene began, right? When you were younger, what was your favorite hobby? Like, did you play video games or watch movies? What'd you do, Lisa? This is to remember um, how you think and communicate. I read um, comic books. Okay, yeah, and which ones? Name them all. Um, Betty and Veronica. And, Why was that your favorite? And um, romantic stories, ro Why you know, Betty fairy Veronica tales. <laughs> Why was Betty and Veronica your favorite? Um, because I, you know, I could identify with nice Betty and evil Veronica. <laughs> okay, which one do you think should end up with Archie? And this is a serious question. Well, that had to be Betty. Why? Because <laughs> she was nice. Yeah. Um, and when you were younger, was there was there a game on the playground you used to really like to play? No, I hated the playground. I hated. Um, I I was a loner. Where did you prefer to be at it during that time? What? Where did you prefer to have been at during recess? Yeah, yeah, and I was shy. I couldn't talk to anybody. It was torture. Uh -huh. <laughs> But where did you feel good around kids? Maybe choir or what? Was there a place though that you did enjoy? Choir. I love choir and dancing class. Starting to start the scene. Um, you have to understand, I'm not one for getting involved. Yeah, but you, you did uh, see the crash? Heard it. It got me up from my TV just as a, Alonzo was telling Chastity, he's not really her half brother. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Alonzo and Chastity? My stories. <laughs> um, oh, I, I knew it all along. Can't trust them Latin lover types. <laughs> okay, so what did you see, ma'am? Oh, well, when I got to the window, I saw um, the other car speeding off. Yeah, what, what, what did the car, what kind of car was that? Blue, one of them SUVs. Um, no, wait, it was green. Green for sure, um, or gold. Lisa, that was the most brilliant. I mean, that that's the kind of audition where they go, we have to give it to this woman. <laughs> I want you to allow that at every audition because I'll bet you're about to tell us that was easy, aren't you? Very, very easy, very easy. And yeah. if it's easier, that's because you stop being involved in a pressure or responsibility based on your culture. What was it you let go of, dear? Yeah, yeah. What was it you um, let go of? Well, I mean, what that really hit me when you said um, to not think of you as a teacher or a authority or something like that. And then it really helped me when you started go going like this. <laughs> No, you. it didn't help you. That had nothing to do with it, dear, because I did this because I was being blown away by a gorgeous, spontaneous performance. And now you're out of the groove. Boy, were you in a groove today. Yeah, and yeah. Every time you let the line come out in a way that surprised you, it paid off by being a pow, sock in the face of spontaneity to me, the producer. And mm. I go, shit, if we could get that on screen. Mm. That was so much easier, so I much mean, easier. You just decided, I know how gold sounds and it sounds like this. No, it was green or gold. Now look, that's fine if it surprised you and it was fine the first take because it kind of surprised you, but then you just kept doing that. This time you didn't just do what the way, you didn't go into autopilot and you went, oh no, it was, it was green, definitely green. Yeah, I think I was in I mean, you remember that spontaneous pow when you went, oh, oh. honey, you can't fake that. You have to allow it. Mm. You have to give yourself permission to have it happen and understand it's what books you the job. Mm. Not because it it's um, the perfect way to do it, so you should practice it like that and then deliver it to them. No, it's because it you, was unplanned and it was you it was Lisa doing an improv about, oh, fuck, I don't know. You know, and you should hope it comes out different the next time you do it. Yeah.
You can't fake spontaneity, people. And when something surprises the actor, there's an electric jolt in the room and everyone in the room feels it. And the more of those you have, the better chance you have of booking the job. That's why every actor's motto should be, all I want to do is surprise myself. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful work, Lisa. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. I mean, it's a nice audition to begin with until you start muscling it. But what you just did, that's the kind of audition they go, oh, well, I mean, we have to give it to it. Okay, good work. Um, okay, everyone out there. Again, all the money today went to help keeping elections fair. That's Stacey Abrams Fair Fight 2020. Um, good luck to everyone. Stay safe. Uh, you know, make content, do your art for the selfish love of doing it. Be kind to yourselves during this period because we're going through trauma together and uh, it will work out okay. Uh, take care of yourselves and thank you again for coming. Bye-bye.